You're watching Valley Sports, the home of the Tigers, Pistons, and Red Wings. Welcome everybody back to Ford Field. The Mason Bulldogs looking to cap off an undefeated season as they look for their first state championship in program history. And they face the Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central team that is back in the title game for the second straight year, but looking for a different result. Let us flash back. Forest Hill Central taking on the powerhouse that is Warren De La Salle. Head coach Tim Rogers admitted to us this week, you know, such an accomplishment just getting to that title game for the first time it was nearly 30 years. They just didn't play their best. They lost 52 to 13, but they feel like this year's team is much better prepared having gone through that experience. The MHSAA football finals on Valley Sports Detroit are presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford Dealers. Hi, everybody, and welcome inside Ford Field. Alongside my partner, Justin Sassante, I am Johnny Kane. We have a great matchup coming up here in Division Three. There have been a lot of good games throughout this weekend. This could be the best of them all. I agree, Johnny. You have two communities that have been playing with each other since their junior years of football, and it really created a bond in some great competitors. You have balanced offenses that can run and pass the football and two defenses that love to pursue, run, and hit. It's going to be a great one and a lot of athletes on both sides. Let's talk about one of those athletes, Mason McDonald, the talented quarterback for Forest Hill Central. What makes him so special? Mason McDonald is a true leader of this offense. He's the nucleus, what makes it go. He's a courageous ball player. He's played through injury most of the playoffs. He is a, a big arm, dual threat quarterback, 700 yards plus rushing, 1,000 yards plus passing, and he really is going to make you honor him in the run and, and really push it to his deep threats like Ty Huckins, the Purdue commit, in the deep ball with the throw. And then he also has a guy, Max Richardson, who's a junior Stanford commit, just a big, strong, fast guy. They're going to use him. He's extremely intelligent all over the field on offense. They're going to put him at H. They're going to put him at tight end. They're going to put him at flex receiver. They're going to make him block, and they're going to try to stretch the field. And he also is the anchor of that defense that really has done a tremendous job all year, and he's going to have to have a big day today for Forest Hill Central to take home the state championship. And you mentioned about Hudkins being another Power 5 commit. Boiler up. This guy gets it done all over the football field. The guy's just a tremendous athlete. Watching him last year, being able to call that game, you could tell he was a threat and a game breaker anytime he touches it. And when he goes, the rest of the football team goes. And for Mason, they've got tremendous athletes as well. Their junior quarterback, Kaysen Carswell, is fabulous. And how about their senior running back, A.J. Martell? He's a problem. Yeah, they're both a problem. The dynamic duo, Carson Caswell first, number one, is a very high IQ football player. Coach Holton says one of the smartest guys he's ever coached. Very accurate, moves the pocket with his feet, keeps it, his eyes downfield, and really can hurt you with his feet, but really rather hurt you with his big arm. And then he has this guy in the backfield, four-sport athlete, 300 uh, hurdle state champion, just God-given speed, can run with balance, quickness, and power. A.J. Martell, and he's going to have to have a day today to lead Mason to their first state championship. It's going to be a fabulous championship game here in Division Three. Forest Hills Central against unbeaten Mason. We will bring it to you next. You're watching the MHSAA Finals here on Valley Sports. Special presentation of the MHSAA football finals is brought to you by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Family is not just the name of our company, but the way we do business. By your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. It's a game changer. This Thanksgiving weekend, all roads lead to Ford Field. Last season, Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central drove headfirst into a team operating with maximum horsepower. But the Rangers are back again, adding a few luxury features. Mason makes its first ever appearance in a state final. 
entering Sunday with a spotless record and a senior class that's been assembled from the ground up. Who will take the checkered flag? It's the Rangers of Forest Hill Central and the Bulldogs from Mason who will decide the Division III championship next on Valley Sports Detroit. <laughs> And we welcome everybody inside. Again, a fabulous matchup here. Johnny Kane, Justin Sasante, Alexi Ayala, the third member of our team. The football game is what it is, but a tremendous story for this Mason football program. And for more on that, let's send it downstairs to Lexi. Thanks, Johnny. During Mason's football game against Hull on August 26th of this year, two Mason High School students, Lillian Plagueis and Amanda Blue, were killed in a car accident. The entire Mason community grieving in unison, and it was Mason's head coach, Gary Houghton, who said it was that moment he didn't care about the football season anymore. All he cared about was his team's well-being and mental health. When Coach Houghton and the assistant coaches talked to the team the next day to see how they were doing, it was the players, the kids, who said, Coach, no, we want to play the rest of the season, and we want to dedicate this season to Lily and Amanda. When the DeWitt game rolled around, Mason held a moment of silence for their classmates to honor and remember them. Lily and Amanda's family even attendance for this game. Coach Houghton told me, I've never seen anything like it. The way these kids responded to such emotional adversity and focused on seizing the day every day after that moment with Lily and Amanda in their minds. Johnny. It's just a tremendous story. It's hard to it's hard to understand exactly what this program has gone through uh, when you hear that. Very personal, obviously, for everybody who's wearing the blue and red here today. And uh, what a testament to the program, to the dedication, and again, this student body on all of our hearts here tonight. And we appreciate that story. We are just about underway here in the Division Three Championship game. There is Coach Houghton. Grand Rapids, Forest Hill Central won the toss. They will defer, and it is Mason who will receive the football. A.J. Martell back deep for Mason. Alex Moeller will handle the kicking. And the kick is away, and it'll be Tyler Baker, the up man, who hands it off to Martell. Martell, nowhere to go. Brought down at the 16-yard line, and that is where the Mason Bulldogs will take over. Nolan Hartle in on the stop for Forest Hills Central. Well, there he is, number five. Get used to hearing his name today. Justin, you hit on it during the open. Casey Carswell has thrown for more than 2,300 yards. Another that touchdown to interception ratio. I don't care what level of football you play at. That's flat out getting it done. Yeah, just very accurate football player when he comes to the pass game. He's the leader of his offense and uh, first time in the state championship, so definitely has to keep the motions under control and lead the way. So they'll run that spread option. Two receivers here to the near side. A.J. Martell, the deep back behind Carswell. Carswell, turn around, hand it off. Martell, good up front tackling by Forest Hills Central. Picks up a couple of yards on the play. Orion Roskam and Lucas Fors in on the stop. Take a look at the big fellas. Nick Sade, Connor Osipsik, Brennan Miller, Grant Gilkert, and Jack, J excuse me, Jace Jacquart. And there's A.J. Martell, Logan Dorr, Tyler Baker, Caleb Paris, Derek Badgley in your skill positions. Second and nine. Carswell from the shotgun, back to pass, reaching, looking to the sideline. He was looking for Martell, but well defended by Max Richardson, the junior linebacker for Forest Hills Central. Now let's talk about this Forest Hills Central defense because these guys can get it done. Of course, Forest Hills Central wearing that green and white, representing the OK White Conference. Lucas Forrest, Quinlan Sutherland there at the nose position. Cedar Middaw, Max Richardson, J.T. Hartman, Nolan Hartle, and then in that defensive secondary, you mentioned Hudkins going to Purdue, also Cargill, Brady Druke, another talented player in that secondary. Third and long, spread set, Carswell to Martell, knocked out of bounds by Max Richardson near the marker. And 
I believe he is going to be short by a couple of yards. And you see here, they're going to try to mismatch, get Martell out in space. They did it in the prior play as well. Max Richardson, though, is not the guy you want to find a mismatch with. He does a great job running sideline to sideline and creating a three and out for Mason. So Mason, first offensive possession, forced to punt the football. Ty Hudkins and Brendan Cargill back deep for Forest Hill Central. Tyler Baker back to kick, and there is a whistle. And I believe this is going to go against Mason, which will back him up even more. Prior to the play, ball start, offense. Five-yard penalty down to Mains four. That's the head referee, Mark Coscarella. And Johnny, a game like this, special teams is one third of the game. It's going to be crucial to not kick to each other's athletes as well as don't put yourself in vulnerable positions, back yourself up, and make sure that you're taking care of the football. So now Tyler Baker stands inside his own five yard line. Able to get the punt away cleanly, and it is a nice kick. Brendan Cargill up near midfield before he is upended. And that's where this Forest Hills Central team will take over with the football for the very first time. 39-yard punt, a return of five yards. And the talented senior quarterback, Mason McDonald, wears number nine in the green and white. Again, nearly 1,500 passing yards. 18-5 is his touchdown interception ratio and can also hurt you on the ground. Does a great job of managing the offense here. They do want to run that old Auburn or what Ferris State currently runs at power spread. Takes the handoff. Quarterback keeper, Mason McDonald. You know, one other thing about McDonald, been dealing with that bit of a toe injury, trying to play through that gritty effort. And again, when you run it as much as McDonald does, you know, you can't hide those injuries. No, I think adrenaline's going to carry him through this football game, and having a, a week, a longer week off to rest was really beneficial there for the quarterback at Forest Hill Central. Second and six. McDonald from shotgun. Play action. Rolling to his right. Looking downfield. He's got his man, and that's Ty Hopkins. He could be a game breaker on offense. First down, Forest Hill Central. Gain of 22 for the Rangers. What they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and exchange so they overload a side. They're going to make you shift as a defense, and then they're coming back on a boot and where they get them on a one-on-one -on -one matchup with that corner safety uh, and making sure to make a really good football play here right off the rip, taking a big chunk play. One of the things Mason doesn't want to do is give up big football plays. I mean, I know either side doesn't. That's Captain Obvious. But you don't want to see that from some of the playmakers that Forest Hill Central has. McDonald back to pass. Here comes Crusher! Oh, my mercy. Sam Corey came in like a missile. And when you... When you start getting action one way, you really have to have that backside defensive end stay home. He does a really good job of keeping contained, and when he sees time to go get ball, kill ball, that's exactly what he does. Sam Corey, the 6'1", 190-pound junior. That's a loss of 12. Ball comes loose late, but again, after McDonald was already ruled down. So second and 22, five on the play clock. McDonald, quick pass. JT Hartman and stood up immediately. And that Mason defense is swarming and this crowd behind him early. Let's take a look at this Mason defense. Again, the Bulldogs playing out of the Capital Area Activities Conference. Sam Corey had the big sack there. Grant Giltress, Brennan Miller, Caleb Parrish. The linebackers, Badgley, Dorr, and Vaughn. And that defensive secondary, Nick Wells, Cole Reese, Tyler Baker, and A.J. Martell. Third and 18. McDonald. Underneath. Ty Hudkins. Hudkins, second effort. Leaning inside the 20-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down. But a nice play to pick up 12 yards before Caleb Vaughn 
Brings him down. Got to bring up fourth and about six. You call this a long handoff. You got the rocket screen. You want to put your athletes in space, and it does a really good job of making this a manageable fourth down and, uh, or getting into field goal range. Field goal try from Alex Moeller is up and good. So a quick three points for Coach Tim Rogers and this Rangers team. Good looking field goal kick to pay off that drive. They got a special handshake. Hey, when you get the first points in the championship game, we all better learn it. A little geography lesson here on a Sunday afternoon. We're looking in the mitten. And the map of both these programs making their way to Ford Field. Division three championship. Let's take a look at the Forest Hills profile. There's Coach Rogers. Again, established back in 1958. And the OK White right out of there in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Three all-time finals appearances. Looking for the championship here today. Coach Rogers done a nice job now in his 12th season. They defeated Zeeland West in the semifinals. And again, back here for the second time in two seasons. It had been about almost what, 28 years since they had been in the championship before Tim Rogers got him back. So, you know, this is a new experience for most of these kids. For some of the seniors, had some experience playing in this game last year against De La Salle. Uh, today they feel better about their chances. Although Mason is <laughs> pretty doggone good. Well, as Coach Rogers said, they, uh, they feel more prepared and they know what they know now. Alex Moeller kicks it away. Tyler Baker, A.J. Martell with the deep man. Didn't make it that far back. And the return man. Sam Corey. You got that eye black. They'll get it up past the 30-yard line. There's the Mason School profile. Again, in the Capital Area Activities Conference red, just south of Lansing. And first finals appearance here today. And again, the talent, especially that one-two punch, A.J. Martell. They go right to Martell, out of the Wildcat. Martell running the short side of the field, picks up a couple of yards. Got to bring up second down. So one thing you're going to notice about Mason, they're going to give you a lot of different looks, but try to accomplish the same thing, whether it's inside, outside zone. But they want to get the ball into their playmaker, A.J. Martell. When he gets going, it seems like he gets better with the game, starts wearing on defenses. Well, I'll tell you, Forest Hill Central has done a good job keen on him, not only on the special team's kick return play, but also here early in the game on offense. Second long. Carswell rolling to his right. Carswell has his intended target. Leaning forward, Derek Badgley right at the markers. Badgley, they're going to say just shy. They're going to mark him a yard short. No, they're going to go ahead and say it is a first down. I apologize. They move the sticks. Justin Sassante, you're a good Italian. Good Italians, they like good sauce. Let me hear the Sassante sauce yeah. for today. The sauce for this game is first Mason's first time here. Act like you've been here. All right, make sure you get the nerves out quick. Limit the big plays. Respond to sudden change, and you have to take care of the football. I like it. Boundary, boundary. Martell, again, out of the Wildcat. Martell, heavy hitting. He took a shot from Ty Hudkins. And picks up about four yards. That'll bring up second and six. And Johnny, in these games, you're going to have sudden change. You're going to have to make sure you respond to it. Again, you go back to the offense here. They're trying to get downhill, and they're going to make it sure that each team has to establish the run. No matter what formation they give, whether it's an empty set, whether it's a full backfield, they have to establish the run. They know that. And on defensive side, they know they have to stop the run to force them to do something, not be as balanced as both teams have been all season. Coswell back to pass, slings it out. Martell in space, tries cutting back. Good open field tackle by Drew Fortino. He's a guy who plays well in space, showed it right there.
Fortino, the senior defensive back, able to bring down the senior running back, A.J. Martel. Right, right here, you're going to see that the back's coming out. And they just get a little swing pass. This is now the third time they've attempted to get him. Two of them have hit Max Richardson on the other one. And they ask in this corners coverage for Forest Hill Central for these corners to have to tackle well and tackle in space and tackle often. Good job there by Drew Fortuna. Martel. Nowhere to go, but it was third and short. They're going to give him just enough. Move the sticks again. Another first down. Nolan Hartle, Brady Druke in on the stop for Forest Hill Central. Ground and pound. Heavy doses of A.J. Martell. Looks like he got the A.J. He's got the J on the eye black. He's got the A on the other side. I couldn't see it. Well, they played him at quarterback in the Wildcat. Nice back there running back. Carswell back to pass with time. Late pursuit. He's trying to bark out some signals, looking for downfield, but nowhere to go. Good stop from Quinlan Sutherland. Number 55. No gain on the play. Sutherland transferred in from the Traverse City School District about four years ago. And yeah. now playing that nose position brings that great pursuit. Yeah, it does a really good job. He's elusive and quick. He gets there. He stays within his side, makes sure that he's not getting over pursuit on the football and does a good job of wrapping up the quarterback there on that play. Second and long. Coswell was up under center. Now moves into shotgun. With time, throwing, finding, two feet in. That's Tyler Baker, the 6'2", 180-pound senior. Gets them both in. That's a gain of 14. Move the six one more time. There's a reason he has 28 receptions for 644 yards and five touchdowns. He's a long, athletic kid, very aware of the sideline there. Toe taps, only needs one. He gets both. And they do a really good job of putting the running backs in the backfield to max protect and pick up the blitz and pressure there from Forest Hill Central. Martell stood his ground as J.T. Hartman was closing in. They hand it off. Martell absorbs the initial contact, falls forward, picks up three. Nolan Hartle, number 21. In on the stop, as was J.T. Hart. Coach Rogers had a lot to say about the inside linebackers at Forest Hill Central. Said that Noel Hartle's really the downhill uh, and, and can run side to sideline, and so is J.T. Hartman. And they're asked to do a lot in this defense as it's a spill-fill type of uh, system here and scheme. And they really bring the wood when they come downhill, and you saw it right there. A.J. Morrow's playing hard. He's getting a lot of carries early. He's touching the football often. Second and seven. They swing Martell out. Carswell instead looks for Caleb Parrish. Parrish inside the 20-yard line. That'll be another first down. Brady Drukey in on the stop, but not before the Bulldogs from Mason pick up 15 yards. Right here, you're going to see the tight end. Go ahead and roll it. And you're getting that motion out from A.J. Martell, so it pulls everybody out a little bit, opens up a window to hit that tight end. He's now got his cast off. He's been playing most of the playoffs with the cast, made a huge catch in overtime against Walt Lake Western. And you see that Caleb Parrish is a big-time playmaker for Mason. They will go to him early and often. Well, he got, he's got his fingers freed up, but that cast, that is prominent in bright blue. Little jet sweep to Derek Badgley. And Badgley, inside the 15-yard line, picks up a couple there on first down. That'll bring up second and long. Badgley, one of the quiet leaders on this team. See the misdirection here. You're going to get there with A.J. Martell. Everybody on the defense is following him. He's been highlighted on special teams and offense. Has touched the ball already probably 10 times. And good misdirection, getting some positive yardage for Mason. J.T. Hartman in on the stop. Again, number 40 in white. Real talented linebacker for them. A.J. Martell, again, in the backfield. Wildcat coming to the near side. Martell trying to get to the edge. Martell throwing the stiff arm out. He got the stiff arm extended against Jacob Harleton. But that will bring up third down. He's 
Brought down at the eight yard line. Gonna bring up third and two. Picked up four on the play. Offensive coordinator Chad Somerville does a really good job of playing chess. He's gonna run one play to set up the next play, and you saw exactly same look, but came and got the edge there to get a third and short opportunity in the red zone. Carswell up under center. Turns around, hands it off. Martell, there's pursuit, and Martell goes down. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage, but that's JT Hartman. He's a marked man. He's the leading tackler. 102 total tackles coming in to today. Yeah, you see here, JT Hartman, go ahead and run it. And he's going to just see that window. He's going to stay patient on the backside. He's going to see the window clear with Parrish pulling through. It comes down and runs it from the backside of the football play. Great job by that young man to put them in a fourth down situation. Fourth and short. Colin Winters. He had to try to even the score at three apiece. Five on the play clock. Good snap, good hold. That's a good kick. And we are all square at three apiece. Colin Winters, number 90. That's three. And we are all square. Three apiece inside three to play here in the Division Three final. Welcome back inside Ford Field for your presentation of the MHSAA D3 Football State Finals on Valley Sports Detroit. Now this is the second straight year that Forest Hills Central's football team was sent off to the State Finals Lake Kings. However, even though the community came out in large, parents were excited and proud, firefighters, police sirens like music to everybody's ears, that magical moment diminished for the players the second they stepped foot on that bus because at that point the mindset became this is a business trip of course when they got to detroit they still had a team dinner or i guess i could call it a business dinner where they discussed the game plan watched some football figured out the ways in which they would win today johnny love it yeah they were watching the games from inside the hotel a conference room in there yeah, well, you see there, boy, this, we, we thought this was going to be a heavyweight match, and they're feeling each other out, trying to establish the run, but also setting up what they can do in the play-action pass game and seeing where they're vulnerable as far as how they're lining up to each other on defense and offense. So we'll see here. I think this is a big drive to try to open up the game here for Forest Hill Central and establish something in the run game. Ty Hutkins fields the, the kick. That'll be a touchback. 13 play, 61-yard scoring drive. And we are all square at three apiece. Winners with a 26-yard field goal. And here come the Rangers of Forest Hills Central. Coach Rogers said we got to get out to a good start. As Lexi mentioned, second straight year they've been sent off like kings. He said good news is we've been here before. Bad news is last year we played the Kansas City Chiefs. And he says if we get out, we got some plays that don't go our way, uh, we don't want to have those bad memories coming. Of course, the Chiefs being born deep in second. Hand off to J.T. Hartman, big pop. Picks up a couple of yards. And let's set the offense here for the Rangers of Forest Hills Center again. Wearing the green and white. That's J.T. Hartman. But up front, Orion Roskam, Lucas Forrest, J. Coe, the center, Alex Korf, and Joey Wing, talented right tackle. There's Hartman, Max Richardson, Ty Hudkins, Chase Enbody, and Brendan Cargill. Hartman in the backfield behind the senior quarterback, Mason McDonald. And they hand it off to Hartman. Hartman leaning, leaning, picks up a couple on second and seven. That'll bring up third and manageable. We'll give him four. And Caleb Parrish in on the stop. Yeah, and you'll see that they're spreading them to run the football, and they'll just use Max Richardson and just go ahead and move him inside a little bit for that lead, power lead with JT Hartman. What Mason is doing a good job is meeting the point of the attack, and they're really causing a pile inside and not letting them get downhill really quick. Third and three. Minute and a half to play here in the first quarter. Hand off to Hartman. Hartman leaning forward right at the sticks. I believe he got just enough. Caleb Parrish in on the stop, but not before a Forest Hills first down. At JT Hartman, again, talking with coach, he said, 
you know, he special player, shifty, good decision maker, really the lifeblood of this Rangers offense. Hartman again, between the tackles. Picks up a couple yards, Sam Corey in on the stop, gain it two. And although Forest Hill Central's given some different formations here, they're gonna be able to give the power lead, the dive, they're gonna be able to pull that with the quarterback, and he's gonna be able to run it, and they're gonna have a pass play off of that. So Mason has to be conscious to stop all three, but they have to honor the run first, which they just did a good job there on first down. Second seven, 30 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. Hartman shifts to the left of McDonald. They pitch it that way. Hartman rolling to his left, makes the first man miss. Hartman absorbing contact again, falling beyond the 40-yard line. That'll be another Forest Hills first down. Caleb Vaughn in on the stop, gain of eight. Yeah, you see JT Hartman right here, and you're usually getting some power with him, but you're gonna get the quick pitch, and he's gonna get to the edge quickly with the DN crashing, looking for that inside run. And he is the hammer, not the nail. He's going to bring the wood. He's gonna put that shoulder down. He's not trying to juke you and be all fancy and cute. He's gonna get downhill and get the tough yardage. Laying the lumber as we come to the end of quarter number one, all square at three apiece. Forest Hills Central on the move. Now we're getting ready to start the second quarter. Let's take a look at the Grand Rapids community profile. Founded back in 1826 with a history as a furniture manufacturing center. Grand Rapids home to five of the world's leading office furniture companies and sometimes nicknamed Furniture City. Grand Rapids Ballet is Michigan's only professional ballet company where you can see the Nutcracker, the holiday's favorite, at DeVos Performance Hall this December. And Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park ranked one of the 45 most visited art museums in the world. If you haven't visited yet, consider visiting during the holiday season. On Saturday, Santa's reindeer will be stopping by from one to four. No word yet if Coach Rogers will be there. But he might. Coach, he might. Good guy, Tim Rogers. So here we go. JT Harmon, five straight carries for 21 yards on this drive. This time they fake it to him, and McDonald keeps it himself. So Mason McDonald picks up a nine. We'll call it eight on first down. A.J. Martell in on the stop. And now a little up-tempo action. They hand it right back off to J.T. Hartman. Hartman now to the 40-yard line. So here to start the quarter, they go bang, bang. They're not wasting any time huddling up. That's J.T. Hartman with six of the last seven carries for about 31 yards. And you see what Max Richardson is to this offense. They move him around to lead block and to really bring the hammer, whether it's a kick out, whether it's a lead, whether it's a trap. And he does a really good job because how big and strong he is. And they continue to go up tempo. And now looking to the sideline is Mason McDonald. I like this from the offense. Just throw something, a curveball at him, right in the middle of the game. Fake to Hart. And McDonald plunging forward. Another solid game. Derek Badsley, the linebacker, stops him after a gain of five. And that'll bring up second down. This quick tempo will challenge the defensive linemen to sit down in their stance a little longer. It's going to challenge you to get your defensive calls in and adjust. You're not going to get to look at their formation as quickly, and you can see they're starting to gash inside a little bit with that quick tempo offense here. McDonald rolling to his right. Hartman out blocking in front for him. Picks up a couple of yards. That'll bring up third and short. Connor Osipsik, the senior defensive tackle, number 54, in blue, able to make the stop. Well, Sipsik, really good football player. And they're gonna run over their big right tackle, the best offensive lineman they have, number 64, Joey Wing. They bring over Hartman as well as Max. 
Richardson, and they're running a QB power right there, and just really starting to lean on Macy's defense a little bit. Get, keep doing what got you here. Work your workhorses. Third and three. Direct snap to Hartman. Hartman, little sling pass. Ty Hopkins, and Hopkins inside the 25-yard line, and on third and short, a little wrinkle in what they've been doing. He picks up eight yards, brought down by Caleb Vaughn. Yeah, you see right here, Tyler Huckins, he's the Purdue commit, and it's a bad snap, so he really has an option as a wildcat as far as JT Hartman now being that quarterback there. He either can run it, I think with the bad snap, he decided to go ahead and get it out quick like a long handoff to Ty Huckins, burn it for a first down. And stoppage of play on the field, timeout taken by Mason. So, again, to start this quarter, Coach Rogers. Brings the up tempo, and now Gary Houghton for Mason say, let's collect ourselves here. Let's get things settled down. We're in a good football game. You mentioned that opening quarter, a lot of feeling each other out, and now you say, okay, everybody, now let's show them what we got. Now a message from Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Family is not just our name, it's the way we do business. My father chose the name Family Heating because he wanted our company to treat everyone like family. You'll see the difference family makes. Yeah, you can see uh, exactly what you said, Johnny. They're filling each other out, but with this up-tempo, Forest Hill Central starting to lean on the front of Mason. I think that's a great time out there by Coach Houghton. It's like, settle down, everybody. Everything's going to be all right. Let's catch your breath with this up-tempo. They're making you sit in your stance a little longer. Let's identify what they're doing, make some quick in-game adjustments, and let's get back to playing our brand of football. On this drive, 10 plays, 55 yards. They're taking about five minutes of game clock off, so Forest Hill Central putting it together. Forest Central never afraid to take a deep ball shot, 50-50. They got some athletes who go up and get it. And they fake the jet sweep. McDonald keeps it himself. Mason McDonald inside the 15-yard line, down at about the 14. Gain of 11. A.J. Martell, number 26 in blue, able to bring him down, but not before another first down. Yeah, here you're going to watch there, Max Richardson, and it's just going to be a, a QB power here. He's going to lead up to the linebacker, and when you have Hartman and Richardson coming in to find some lead blocks there, they're going to find somebody to hit, and that's an easy run there for Mason McDonough. McDonough, this time they do go with the jet sweep. Ty Ryan, Ryan, not much running room. He was stood up. Taken down by Connor Osipsik. The defensive tackle for the Mason Bulldogs. Take a look at this hit. Yeah, what a really good job of just running down the line there, oh. stringing out the play, and just staying on the back hit and getting your shoulder down. Really good tackle. You want to make these guys feel you every time that they try to run the football down here in the red zone, and that's a really athletic play for a big man. I don't want to be standing across the line from Connor Osipsik. That's just me. Second and long. McDonald keeps it himself, being patient with it, but again, only able to pick up a couple of yards. They'll give him three yards on it. A.J. Martell in on the stop, and that's going to bring up another third down situation. And what, what Forest Hill Central is trying to do when it's trying to overload a side, they're trying to get numbers on that side of the box. Logan Dorr for Mason did a really good job of scraping over. They talk in it as him as being the emotional leader, really on both sides of the football. But here he comes in and fills and puts them in the third down and mid-range. And really a, a big play here, key down to stop Forest Hill Central from their momentum they've gained on this drive. Two of three on third down. JT Hartman lined up. Here at the near side of the screen, empty backfield for Mason McDonald. McDonald looking to his right. Now being flushed from the pocket. McDonald couldn't get enough zip on the pass. That's because he was being in hot pursuit by Caleb Parrish and Sam Corey, the bookend defensive ends for the Mason Bulldogs. And that brings up fourth down. 
Right here, you see number 81 and number four, and really their job is going to contain that quarterback. Number four is going to be able to pick up anything crossing his face, which he does, and then he's going to have an opportunity to say, am I going to cat and go punch to the quarterback, which he did and was able to get his hands up and force a bad, bad throw. Good job by Caleb Parrish as well as Sam Corey. Field goal try from Alex Moeller. Splits the uprights. 27-yard field goal. And we got a 6-3 ball game. Hey, three at a time. Another good drive for Forest Hill Central. I'll tell you, the luxury of having a good high school football kicker, and Forest Hill Central has that in Alex Moeller. 6-3, Rangers. Let's take a look at our Mason community profile. Settled back in 1836, but incorporated as a village in 1865, then became a city in 1875, believe it or not. You can get your Christmas tree at Tannenbaugh Farms, and enjoy hot chocolate, hay rides, and bonfires. Family-owned Christmas tree farm opened back in 1978 with 3,000 trees planted over three acres. You can visit the Maple Street Mall in historic downtown Mason for unique holiday gifts. This building hosts over 55 different vendors selling antiques, collectibles, and handmade items. And I heard Justin Sasante has made a couple of items himself. Very big into cross-stitching this time. Yes, right? if I'm not cooking, and I'm cross-stitching. <laughs> and you can dine downtown at the Courthouse Pub. This hometown pub uh, is within walking distance of, I believe, where we were just, uh, just mentioning that, the historic downtown unique shopping. So exciting. Courthouse Pub, never been. You been? I haven't, but I love the charm of all the small towns here in Michigan, so you always find gems when you're traveling up north in the summer. Yeah, Cliff Walkington and Joe Ganelli, the pub owners. And Mason with the football will get it to start. And Tyler Baker on the return at about 32-yard line. So here's a look at the send-off for Mason, which took place uh, early this morning. And look at the crowd. Again, didn't have too far to travel. Again, we talked about that first game starting at 9.30. Most of those guys got in about 7 a.m., 7.30 here at Ford Field. But a beautiful send-off for these Mason Bulldogs. And now they try to answer the bell after that 15-play, 70-yard scoring drive from Forest Hill Central that elapsed seven minutes and 21 seconds. So this offense for Mason been on the sideline for a little longer than they would like. And they have to control the ball now. Don't be predictable, control the football. Inside handoff, nowhere to go for A.J. Martell. That's because Orion Roskam, the guy you're gonna hear a lot about next year as far as scholarships go, he was in on the tackle, number 60 in white. Yeah, coach said he really came along here in the second half of the season. He's going to be a rising star uh, next year as far as uh, really contributing to the football team. 22 tackles, three tackles for loss, and a sack. Most of that coming in the second half. Second and 10, no gain on the play. Oh, lost his footing. Case and Carswell. Goes right to the turf. That's going to bring up third down. They're going to lose two yards on the play, make it three yards on the play. Now you've got a third and long situation. Looks like he just got tripped up as he began to backpedal. Yeah, this is very unfortunate. You're putting in a third and long situation. You do not want your offense to go three and out. Your defense just spent a lot of time on the field against the Forest Hill Central Drive with 15 plays and getting some points. You have to convert here. Start looking to somebody else to make the play other than A.J. Martell so you're not predictable. Third and long. Coswell back to pass. Here comes pressure, and they're going to get to him. A sack by the Ranger defense. Number 15, Drew Fortino. Loss of eight. You're gonna see them come up here. They're gonna bring their athlete up on the edge here and you're coming to bring it, we call that a dog blitz from the outside. Typically not up on the line of scrimmage. They walk them up. They know that an offensive tackle is gonna have a hard time with his athleticism. He chops the arm, bends and gets a big play here for a three and out for Forest Hill Central defense. So the Mason offense, again, on the sideline for better than seven minutes. They come out, quick three and out, not to punt the football away. Got it away, back deep. 
is Brendan Cargill. Cargill up past midfield, and they'll get it on the plus side of the 50-yard line. So ideal starting field position for this Forest Hill offense. 40-yard punt, a return of 14. And now a message from the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Welcome back inside Ford Field for the MHSAA's D3 High School Football State Finals on Bally Sports Detroit, presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Now, there's multi-sport athletes, and then there's Mason's starting running back and free safety, A.J. Martell. Martell broke the school's career rushing yards record this year, and it's really no surprise when you find out that Martell is also a state champion in the 300 meter hurdles in track. But okay, that's where he got his speed. What about his physicality and his toughness on the football field? Well, again, no surprise when you find out that Martell placed in states in wrestling. And if making it to states in three sports isn't impressive enough, well, Coach Houghton told me that every Sunday they have their recovery days in the pool and Martell loves to jump off the diving board just for fun. Well, one day in walks the swim coach, sees Martell jump off one time with zero training, zero practice. Next thing you know, you guessed it, A.J. Martell is a state qualifier in diving too. Now, Johnny, I thought I was an outstanding athlete in high school. A.J. Martell yeah. has me beat by a few touchdowns. <laughs> oh, man. Isn't that incredible? I couldn't believe when we were hearing that. Man, have you tried diving? Ah, okay. I mean, that's just a gifted athlete and obviously puts the work in. Really good student as well. Great story, Lex. Back to pass, McDonough overthrew his intended target. He was looking for Ty Hudkins. They were looking for a home run play out of the timeout. And I'll tell you, Mason just cannot do that, leaving Ty Hudkins one-on-one -on -one with no safety help. He gets a skinny post, doing a great job with that jet to pull the linebackers out, but he has a good one-on-one -on -one matchup. I guarantee Mason McDonough wishes he had that one back. Yeah, had an opportunity to step into the throw, just overthrew him, and that'll bring up second and 10. Tell you what, the AJ Martel, man. That is a gifted athlete. You don't see that often for sports. Wrestling and another sport in the way of wrestling's hard enough. McDonald fakes the Jeff Sweet, keeps it himself, gets past, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Caleb Parrish in on the stop. The senior defensive end, number four right there, leading tackler. He got the stop. Yeah, good job by D-Tackles, Grant Gilchrist and uh, Brennan Miller. The number four really is doing a great job. He's staying home. As soon as that, he, he keeps honest on that jet sweep, he's, quarterback pulls it. He's coming straight down the line, flat on the line of scrimmage and making the football play. Third and 10, look at the bunch receiver set at the top of the screen. McDonald will have JT Hartman lined up directly beyond him. With time, steps into the throw, over the middle. He's got his intended receiver, Brendan Cargill, and that'll be a first down for Forest Hill Central, A.J. Martell, the one-time diver, and also safety, able to come up and make the stop. 25-yard gain on third and 10. And the reason you do this is to really create confusion from the defensive backs. They're gonna all come out, First one's going to run right down a skinny post down the middle, but you're going to get switches from the defensive backs to get a little confusion. That's exactly what happened for a wide open pass there. Mason McDonald doing a good job with the accuracy. And McDonald comes in 59% accuracy on the season. And that one he threw right on the money. First and 10. Ball spotted inside the 25. This time hands it off to JT Hartman. Tough running, falling forward, brought down by Connor Osipsik. Not before he picks up six yards on the play. Up tempo again. The snap, the handoff. Hartman! JT Hartman inside the five yard line. That'll bring up first and goal. Hey, if you're an offensive coordinator, don't overcoach yourself. If something works, go right back to it. I love how they open the drive, first down, throw the football, loosen up the defense. They get a couple big pass plays here and then get down, back downhill running the football. Hands it off again. Hartman plowing forward. He's in for the score. The Rangers go up tempo. 
They feed Hartman, picks up 14 yards, takes it down inside the three, and then he just plunges forward for the first touchdown of this football game. J.T. Hartman, the lifeblood of the Rangers offense. Alex Moeller in to try the point after. He's already got a couple of field goals under his belt. And now the point after try splits the uprights and Forest Hill Central takes a 10 point lead. Really good job here by Max Richardson leading up, getting a chip lock number 50 there. Lucas Fors leading up to the linebacker, and JT Hartman just doing a good job. Go ahead, run it through. Could just do a good job of using his eyes, seeing where his blockers are, opens up, and an easy touchdown there for Forest Hill Central. They really started leaning on him in that last couple drives. Mason's going to have to figure out how to stop the run because the more they can run the football, it's going to open up for play action. It's going to open up the vertical pass game and now you're going to have to stop a three-headed monster here in Forest Hill Central offense. JT Hartman with the three-yard touchdown run. Remember the big play was when Mason McDonald hit Brendan Cargill for 25 yards on third and 10 which helped set it up. Six plays, 48 yards, took almost two minutes of clock time and now a 10-point lead for Forest Hills Central and we'll see what Mason has to answer. And Mason has been in some fist fights this year. They've been in some close games, overtime games, very dramatic uh, games throughout the season in the playoffs. So one of the Sasante sauces was they have to respond to adversity. They have to really understand when you're starting to get pushed on, can we throw back a big punch here in this heavyweight fight? That's a spicy sauce, Justin. That's Grandma, a spicy Grandma's sauce. Grandma's homemade there. One of a kind. Keep in mind, Forest Hill Central scored on all three of its possessions. Alex Moeller set to kick it away and back deep for Mason. Tyler Baker. Baker gives it to Derek Badgley on the end round. Badgley comes up past the 40-yard line, but there is a flag down. Scratch that. That was Cole Reese, number zero. 32-yard return, but hold the phone. Cole Reese. During the kick, blindside block on the return team. Penalty to force from the basic spot. Like this is a part of football that's become really tough in our day and age. That's a great hit. Uh, if the player is not looking and they feel that he's unprotected, uh, that's going to be called every single time. And again, that's for the safety of the game. It's the right call. It's always tough, though, playing linebacker coming from the 90s uh, when, when that would have been a, a big hit and everybody would have been celebrating. Now it puts Mason back deep in their own uh, territory. So that's going to bring it all the way back inside the 10-yard line for the Bulldogs. So they're going to have to go about 91 yards down the field. Plenty of time. Still have two timeouts left. But Mason has its work cut out for itself. First and ten. He fakes the handoff to Martell. And a quick hitter. He got Caleb Parrish, his senior tight end. Brady Drukey in on the stop after a gain of five. All right, we'll talk about that spicy sauce. What do you got for the defense here? Forest Hills. Yeah, Forest Hills Central, I, I, you know, their, their theme all year is just prove it. But their team experience from last year, even though it didn't work out how they wanted it, is going to pay off. They've contained A.J. Martell to this point, not only on offense, but special teams. And can they respond to adversity? They haven't seen too much of it other than a punch back in the beginning of the game. And Carswell rolling out. And that's going to be a first down. Tyler Baker on the receiving end, brought down by Drew Fortino. Fortino the first to get there. Gain of 13 on the play. Carswell looking to the sideline. That's a big first down for this offense after they went three and out last time out. Trips receivers here to the near side. Carswell rolling to his right. Stepping up, throwing into traffic, and that ball may be picked off. I believe Ty Hutkins got there for the INT. It came just off the fingertips of Caleb Parrish, his senior tight end, and Ty Hutkins, the Purdue commit, right there for the INT. 
I love what Mason's doing here. They're booting outside the pocket. They find their big receiver, Caleb Parrish, just unfortunately comes off his hands. They covered it really well, that flood route, and Ty Hutkins is just a really good athlete. Looks like he hit the ground, though. Get that review and see. Mason can get the football back here. Nose of the football. The previous play is under review. So the nose of the football looks like it did hit the Ford Field turf, so says Mark Coscarella. Yeah, and, I, and this is what I love. These teams get here and work so hard throughout the whole season, all the time that they take away and put into getting to this point that we have review in these big games. Because if this ball goes back to Forest Hill Central, this could really swing this game for them. And if it's not the right call, we we'll hope it's reversed. Some good looks by our camera crew showing you all the angles. And keep in mind, the officiating crew for today, they're going to be looking at the exact same review angles that we're seeing. Now, a couple of these angles have been blocked just because of positioning some of the coaches and the camera equipment, but I thought we had a definitive angle, uh, definitive angle on the first one. And again, the play's eligible for review. Just a reminder, if you haven't caught a lot of high school football this year, scoring plays, potential scoring plays, and then turnovers or potential turns. Yes. And it looks like he may have control, but did the ground aid that control? Did, was it allow him to complete the catch? Yeah, does he lose it right there? I think it does. I think the ball moves a little bit. They did call an interception on the field. So a lot of times, that's as we found watching any level of football, whether it be college or the pro game, what was the initial call and is there conclusive evidence to overturn it. Exactly, Johnny. And I thought Forest Hill Central did a really good job of covering that boot flood route. Uh, it was a dangerous pass there by Casey Carswell to throw into that traffic. He's got a sure-handed wide receiver tight end there, Caleb Parrish, with two good hands today. And uh, a, rare, a rare drop by him that could potentially turn into a turnover. That's the thing about Ty Hutkins. He's always around the football. Purdue commit, power five guy, very good athlete. As we await the call, there he is, Hutkins. He'll play safety more than likely for the Boilermakers next year. So again, taking their time, make sure they get this call right. Again, just 2.06 remaining in the first half. This is a big, big play. As you mentioned, Forest Hill Central, they get the football back right here. Hang on. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Interception, Forest Hill's ball. Wow. The interception credited to Ty Hudkins. And Forest Hill Central gets the football. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Mason. I, uh, you know, um, again, I think it's because they, they called an interception on the field that they didn't have inclusive evidence that they were going to overturn it. But I, I do think he, he aided that interception with the turf. And that's why I'm not officiating the game today. So that is a big break for Forest Hill Central. Now, if you're Mason, you rush your defense out there and you say, hey, we got to get a stop here. Forest Hill Central take a shot on sudden change. Trips receivers to the near side. Mason McDonald pitches it out. J.T. Hartman, it met immediately. Credit Hartman for hanging in, but Sam Corey came up and popped him right in the chops. Maybe he got a yard. He would have lost three after that first hit from number 81, Sam Corey. And Derek Bagley, oh, he does a great job of running to the football. They're trying to get it to the edge very quickly. You get a crack block there from Ty Hutkins, and they run through it and make a big play for a second and long. Yeah, it was Badger that got there and laid the initial lick. Second and long. McDonald swings it out to the right. Hutkins. Hutkins inside the 40-yard line, brought down by A.J. Martell. 1-20 remaining in the quarter. Martel. Grand Rapids, Forest Hill Central with all three of its timeouts remaining, gain of six. Anytime that you have an athlete like Tyler Hutkins and you leave him uncovered, they're bringing in a blitz or some pressure from the outside. They're gonna get it out there right now as a long handoff and get yardage. That's exactly what they did. Third and three. Clock continues to run. Take the pitch. McDonald keeps it himself. And how about the pursuit? Tyler Baker looks like he tripped him up, number 12, and also went on the stop. Number 74, Grant Gilchrist, the senior defensive tackle. 
But big play at Tyler Baker. Again, number 12, Blue, responsible for both the run and the pass. And he's the all-time career interception leader for Mason, but they got him up on the line because he's athletic, and him and Parrish on both sides of the ball are going to be able to run, the line, run, run down the line flat and make plays in the backfield. That's exactly what they did, put him in a fourth down situation. Mason, this is a key play for the football game. Uh, 36 seconds, try to keep points off the board, and then whether you score or not, you go in feeling pretty good at 13-3 halftime that you got a chance at this game. Coming up at the half, what does it mean for the small town of Division Five finalist Corona to be here at Ford Field for the first time a little bit later today? Our Carol Lyles will tell us, and we'll preview the D5 matchup and D1 featuring Belleville and Southfield A&T, which is our nightcap to cap off this fabulous weekend of state championships. Plus, Justin and I will be great. Uh, back to break down the first half of this one and again how this quarter ends how this half ends uh, will be a big part of what we discuss here at the half so out of the timeout Forest still central takes its first fourth and three if you have a wrinkle in your playbook pull it out right now don't want to get too cute but make them think make them react and they tried the hard count but mason stays poised Show blitz coming. They're coming in on max protect here. McDonald keeps it himself. McDonald met immediately, and he's going to be short. Caleb Parrish on back-to-back -back plays comes up and makes the stop. The senior DN maybe picks up two yards, but that's a big play from number four. Caleb Parrish has been all over the field all day. They're asking a lot of them in offense and defense. You see when Max Richardson and Hartman are moved inside, you're going to get that QB power lead, and they do a really good job of meeting a point at attack, especially those linebackers there for Mason. Dorr, Vaughn, and Wells uh, coming down as a defensive back, getting in on it. But Parrish is just causing problems. He's done a great job as a student of the game. He's go ahead, and he's read that play, and he's doing a good job today. Seven tackles for Parrish. And now Mason with 32 seconds remaining, looking for something conservative and underneath. Carswell looking to sling it out in the outside to A.J. Martell in space, but just missed him. Look, and this is the state championship. You, you can't be too careful. You want to be aggressive, but you also don't want to give this ball up again on a turnover or give them any time on the clock to do something with the football on offense in regards to Forest Hill Central. That's Carswell, the junior, Coach Gary Houghton. Said the word cathartic comes to mind. Felt good to finally get over the hump. Remember, they beat Detroit King 26-20 in the semis. They lost to King each of the previous two seasons. Now here they are in the championship game for the first time. Carswell rolling right, has protection. Carswell, first down, Mason Bulldogs. Tyler Baker, the senior wide receiver, hauls it in. Move the chains. Gain of 10. This is one of the best quarterbacks in the state on the move. He gets his shoulders square and able to throw the football. And the reason they're getting him out of the pocket is they're starting to get some pressure. Those are defensive line for Forest Hill Central. Starting to get some work inside there. They're booting him out, giving him some time, and made a big play here. Carswell. Again, to the sideline, Caleb Parrish with another first down reception. Nice job by these receivers for Mason, finding the sticks, getting right to the boundary. Two timeouts still left for Mason, gain of 12. Yeah, and OC Chad Somerville, he's just saying, go ahead and work the sideline. Use your big body, get your body between the defender and the ball, and keep making plays, get out of bounds so we don't have to use our timeouts. 19 seconds remain in the half. Martell springs out to the left. He's got space. Martell getting to the boundary, picks up about five yards. And that'll preserve another timeout. 13 seconds remaining. And you have time. You have an opportunity to hit one pass in the middle of the field. You do still have your timeouts. Get a big chunk play to put yourself in field goal position or even score. They'll give him seven yards on the game. Remember, Colin Winters does have a field goal for Mason in this game. But they got to get a little bit closer to get him in range. For Mason McDonald, do not force the football. Excuse me, Casey Carswell. Do not force the football. Play to live another down if it's not there. Carswell 
rolling right. Carswell, pressure coming, and he throws it away, as you mentioned. Quinlan Sutherland giving chase. Quick off the ball, and he got right in the grill of Casey Carswell and forced the errant throw, and that'll bring up third and three. Johnny, you can attack the middle of the field right now. Seven seconds, you have to get down right now, call the timeout, but put yourself in field goal range so you can get some points out of this late drive that's looked pretty good here for Mason. And a timeout will be taken by Mason. So two timeouts to burn. You want to make sure you get the right play call in on this one. You only need one in your pocket. And as you mentioned, middle of the field is open. But you got time for two plays at best. Now, whether that's a catch and a field goal or a catch and then a shot into the end zone, got to make something happen quick. Yeah, I think you're trying to get some points out of this, get some morale for the halftime. Uh, you want to just try to shoot something in the middle of the field, make sure the wide receivers know, get down, call the timeout right now. I'd love to see them boot Casey Carswell to the left side. They've been bringing him to the right a whole lot, give some type of action or jet, boot him to the left, and maybe even a throw back there to the jet player or the running back. I think that we're starting to get some comfortable in the quarters here for Forest Hill Central, so try to challenge them a little bit, make them move. Let's take a look at the road to the finals for these Mason Bulldogs. Again, they come in unbeaten. I mentioned getting past Detroit King in the semifinals, but they had some tight games, man. That King game, Walton Lake Western, that was a game. They handled the win, but Linden to get it, this whole thing started. It's been a special season. I mean, look at the four programs. Yeah, Those incredible. are some the powerhouses in the state of Michigan year in, year out, and they've taken care of all of them to be here. They've definitely earned their way. Trying to finish it off with the championship hardware. Casey Carswell, the junior quarterback, trots back out onto the field. It's third and three. And now another timeout. This is going to be taken by Forest Hill Central. They say, we want to see what you're doing. And great, we'll talk it over. Great job there, Coach Rogers, Coach Gilroy. Uh, wanted to see what they were going to set up into. Obviously, coming out of a timeout, they're probably going to have their best formation play. They've done their, their film work and they probably know exactly what they're going to do. Now Mason has to counter on the chessboard here, do something that they can get into field goal range. So you mentioned about you know, losing to King each of the last couple of years. That King team was pretty doggone good. They had a pretty good quarterback, if you remember, uh, Dante Moore. But he had some words of encouragement, came over and offered his praise. about what this Mason and the future of their program might look like. So again, Dante Moore yeah. was able to, you know, get past this team. And now, and he says, hey, you guys have something put together. Appreciate what you guys are doing. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool to see that coming from the other side. And Dante Moore, obviously, the best quarterbacks in the state of Michigan. Yeah, he's at uh, UCLA now, uh, originally committed to Oregon. I would say probably uh, top three or four quarterbacks I've seen in the state of Michigan since I've been around, Drew Henson being one of them, but we got a, a kid named Bryce Underwood and Isaiah Marshall that are in the state championship game tonight, and those are special. But these two kids on this field are pretty darn special yeah, themselves. Game recognized game. Here we go, third and three, seven seconds remaining out of a couple of timeouts. Coswell, they've got him rolling to his right. And now coming back to the left. There's nobody downfield. Carswell now directing traffic. Throws back this way, looking for Martell. Oh, ball bounced around. Nearly had it. Caleb Parrish also in there. A.J. Martell in the vicinity with Jacob Harleton and Ty Hudkins, number 22, and number five for Forest Hill Central. There to make sure that nothing bad happened. But look at how close it came. And you practice Ooh. that all the time. Knock the ball down. Don't tip it up. You have a guy behind, guy in front. Really good job. I think if he had a little more time on the clock, he could have ran for a ton of yardage there and really set him up. Took yeah. a big hit at yeah, the end. Yeah, Carswell took a big shot from Quinlan Sutherland. A nice job deflecting there from Harleton and Hudkins in the defensive secondary for Forest Hill Central. Who will hold a 10-point lead as we head into the break? Now remember, Mason received the football to start this game, so it'll be Forest Hill Central will get it back uh, to start the third quarter. And we'll take a look. Again, a lot of field goals in this game. Three field goals kicked in this game, and the only touchdown came right here. 
JT Hunter. Going back to their bread and butter, Max Richardson leading up on the power lead there. JT Hartman finishing the job. Let's send it down to Lexi Ayala, joined by head coach Tim Rogers. Coach, your slogan is just prove it. You've done that so far in the first half, but how have you been able to? Well, we got a great bunch of seniors here that are here for the second year in a row, and, and they're determined to win this game. We talked about last time was a field trip. This time is a mission, and uh, you can see they're playing with some great intensity. We played a pretty good game, kind of played our style of football too. Great defense and run the football. So we continue to do that in the second half. Things will work out for the Rangers. What's been so great about your defense keeping Mason out of the end zone? Well, we're just ball sound. I mean, we're, we're gap sound and we, we run into football. I mean, our kids take it personal that you, when you get a first down on us, let alone a touchdown. So we're just tenacious going to the ball and we, we don't believe anyone could score on us. That's why we play good defense. Coach, appreciate it. Good luck second half. Well, he said they wanted to get out to a good start, and they have gotten off to a good start. Again, that Forest Hills Central Programs community has known about this group for a long time, and they are cooking right now. 13-3, they lead it here in the Division Three Championship game on Valley Sports. Coming up for the third game of our day, the Division 5 State Championship featuring the Cougars of Grand Rapids Catholic Central and the Cavaliers of Corona. Kickoff scheduled for shortly after 4 p.m. on Valley Sports Detroit and the Valley Sports app, but don't go anywhere. We have a story that takes you from the cornfields to Fourfield. Coming right up. something about football that you know that brings this community together and just really drives us we were just kids out in the sticks showing off trying to learn new tricks from the cool kids on TV. it's one of the really cool things about living in a small town is that everybody feels connected everybody has a role and everybody has an opportunity to be a part of it to have people behind us just supporting us it means it means a lot to us you walk into almost any building in Corona and it's good luck on Friday, good luck on Saturday. It's just support and love all around and that's I think that's what makes Corona Corona. We were just 17, all right you guys, well we're a couple days away. You're making the trip to Ford Field first time in program history. What do you make of that? Sounds great. I mean uh, we've been working all year for it and uh, it's finally here. Pretty amazing. You know, it's, uh, it, it was uh, definitely surreal on Saturday. They're going to march on to Ford Field. You know, it took me a few minutes to uh, kind of catch my breath and the emotions um, to make it there, to deliver that to our community and be a part of it. Uh, it was just amazing. It's really exciting. It's something I've looked forward to since I was little. It's been, it's been awesome. It's like a dream, dream come true. I was in like fifth grade thinking, oh, what is the possibility of this happening? I never thought it would actually become true, and it, it has this year. So. I mean, just everybody in like school just talking about the game, what happened, and everybody around community. When I go into the gas station, someone yeah. says, good luck Friday and whatever. So, I mean, it, yeah, it's pretty amazing. We were just 17, chasing all our dreams and making memories. This is my 25th year. I've never witnessed anything like this. I've never been part of anything like this. I know everyone's behind you, and we just want to go out and win a game on Sunday! What do you think that first moment is going to be like at Ford Field on Sunday? It'd be pretty cool. I mean, playing youth football, seeing the varsity players, they were just I wanted to be one of them, and now that I look back, we we are them now, and um, I'm going to try not to relish in like the moment and just go focus on what I have to do, but it's going to be pretty awesome. Seeing from us, from little kids, you know, growing up, dreaming about going to Fort Field in high school, it's just it's becoming a reality, and it's pretty cool. I hope they remember um, what went into it. 
the reason they were successful was not just because of talent, not just because they wanted to, not just because they hoped for it or they wished for it or they dreamed for it. Um, you know, I tell, I tell kids in my middle school all the time, I said, if you really, really want it bad, well, you're halfway there. You know, and, and these guys did really want it bad. They wanted it bad from a very young age. And I hope that as they get older and grow into adulthood and, and, and live their lives, that not only do they live that, what they've done here and, and what's gone into it, but they also pass it on to, to their kids and to other generations. Will Corona bring home their first ever state championship? Find out next around 4 p.m. on Valley Sports app as they face off against one of the most highly anticipated games of the weekend, Grand Rapids Catholic Central. Corona, they're in the stands right now getting ready to go. As for the game that we're in the middle of today, Forest Hills Central leads 13-3 to against Mason. Fire up the band, Mason Bulldogs need to get a little rally going here in the second half. A lot of football left to play as we get ready to start the third quarter. Alongside my partner, Justin Sassante, I'm Johnny Kane. What did you like what you saw from both these teams? And now at the break, what adjustments? What might we see here in the second half? Yeah, I liked how Forest Hill Central really found their identity, really became the balanced offense with some big pass plays. I thought Mason, uh, on the other hand, you know, they, they really relied on A.J. Martell, I think, a little too much, became a little bit predictable. Started working uh, the pass game out of the boot, and that started working for them late in that first half. So I'd like to see more of that from Mason and Forest Hill Central just keep pounding the football until they can stop it. Before Forest Hill Central will get the football first uh, as we start the third quarter. But again, it's such an incredible weekend uh, across the state of Michigan. Still to come on Valley Sports. Grand Rapids Catholic Central and Corona. That'll be the Division 5 game that'll start right around 4 o'clock. And then the Division 1, that's the nightcap. A lot of people looking forward to seeing this one. Southfield A&T against unbeaten Belleville. Yeah, that game I'm excited to, to really see. Uh, Isaiah Marshall, one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Obviously, Bryce Underwood, one of the best uh, quarterbacks in the country. Both have tons of athletes on each side. Southfield A&T's first time. Belleville looking for a 3 -peat. All in all, eight champions decided here at Ford Field over the weekend. We'll bring you the second half of the Division III Final right after this. Let's take a look at our wall side windows, halftime highlights. We had some big plays taking place in the first half. What are you seeing here, Sasante? Yeah, just really good job for Hill Central of, of shutting down the main football player there in A.J. Martell. And then you see Mason there playing both a big heavyweight shot back forth and forth and feeling each other out. Some really big hits. You got athletes on both sides that run and hit to the football. Uh, that's something both coaches talked about, the pride they take on defense. Defense wins championships. It's really not only the high-powered offense, but the defenses that got them there. And you saw a lot of big hits today. Guys really selling out and emptying the tank. Let's send it downstairs, check in, check in with Lexi Ayala, joined by Gary Houghton. Thanks, Johnny. Coach, being down 3-13 to 13 going into the half, what was the main adjustment you let your teams know in the locker room? It really is just about getting back to what we do. You know, we need to get control of the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball and go out and win the half. Thanks, Coach. Good luck, second half. Coach Houghton. They tried to keep this as normal week as possible. Tate Martell heads in to the tent. Excuse me, Jake, um, AJ Martell headed into the tent there and looked a little bit frustrated. Again, that's the injury tent here on the Mason sideline. So we will keep our eyes on that. Check back in with Lexi Ayala. Again, AJ Martell been such a big part of this season for the Mason Bulldogs. And looks like he will be unavailable to start the second half. Look at the statistics here. Again, passing, not much on the run game for Mason uh, in this play, or excuse me, in this game, but you know, Forest Hills Central, all their points have been tough to come by as well. Especially in championship games, you're talking about who wins the rushing yards and who wins the turnover battle. And right now, Forest Hills Central is winning both. Mason have to find their way back in, creating some turnovers and three and outs, and getting back to what got them here be able to rush the football, possibly without A.J. Martell. Tyler Baker 
there to kick it away. Brendan Cargill and Ty Hudkins back deep. Forest Hill Central. It is Hudkins with the football. Hudkins had a steam up to the 22-yard line, and that is Will where the Rangers will take over. Stop made by Dom Rodriguez. You hear Coach Houghton talk about up front. The game of football, regardless of the spread, regardless of all the seven on seven that goes on, it starts up front with the offense and defensive line. Forest Hill Central starting to lean on Mason. Mason has a lot of pride, some really good uh, players up front, especially on this defensive line. See if they can counter punch and get a quick three and out. Mason McDonald fakes the pitch, keeps it himself. McDonald twirled around and brought down at the 24-yard line. Brennan Miller, the senior, came up and makes the stop. And Brennan Miller is a big boy. He is stout for them inside, and he does a great job of staying home with action away to take that QB out and really put them in a second and long situation. We'll call it second and eight. McDonald brings motion again. Fakes the jet sweep. Pump fake once, now throws it underneath. He's looking for Ty Hudkins. Could not find him. That'll bring up third and long. Really good job by Mason's defense. This is how you know they do their homework. They got beat on this couple times early in the first half. Now they stay home on Tyler Huckins, trying to get that rocket pass, that screen pass. They stay home and he has nowhere to throw and put him in the third and long. Crowd comes to its feet. Third and eight. Mason defense would love nothing more than to get a third now, get the football right back. McDonald back to pass, here comes pressure. McDonald using his legs, past the first down marker, and Mason McDonald with a backbreaker picks up the first. What a play, good individual effort. Yeah, right here you have to keep contained. Defensive end gets too far upfield, and Sam Corey, he sees it. Mason McDonald is a true dual threat quarterback. If you give him space, you give something in front of him, he's gonna take it, and that's exactly what he did. That was a big third down conversion. Able to outrun Grant Gilchrist and Brennan Miller. Fresh set of downs for the Rangers. Handoff, JT Hartman. Hartman picks up a couple of tough yards, brought down by Sam Corey. Picks up three yards on the play. You heard Lexi talking with Coach Rogers just before the half about their slogan, Just Prove It. You know, Jim Rogers says, in our society, you got so many in-your-face talkers talking about how good they are, social media we live in. He says, look, that's not us. If you think you're good, show me. Mason McDonald back to pass, looking for the home run. McDonald, completed pass inside the 20, still on his feet. Oh, mercy! Ty Hopkins, maybe the play of the weekend. I don't believe it. 62 yards, and Hunkins carried Nick Wells about 20 yards after the catch. I don't believe it, partner. And in to try the point after is Alex Moeller. Forest Hill Central deciding to take a shot. And take a shot they did. There's a reason why number five is a power five commit. Now they will take a look at all scoring plays. And that's what the stoppage in play is on the field. I thought that second down situation was a great opportunity to take a shot. You know watching Forest Hill Central film, that's exactly when they take it. They're going to go ahead and throw it up for a 50-50 ball. He gets here, he's powering through. He may have stepped out of bounds. 
Stays in there. He's reaching for the pylon. Is he down? That is unbelievable. That is a touchdown. I don't that know if his left hand unreal. touched before. Real. It looks like a touchdown to me. I mean, he is carrying six 170 pounds on his back. And then late to the scene is Tyler Baker, but it looks like he gets the outstretched arm over the pylon. That's a touchdown. Unbelievable play. Way to impose your will. Just wanting it more at that time. They know they taste they had in their mouth last year after coming here and getting beat. And I think Tyler Huggins took it upon himself to say it's not happening again on that play. Look at Nick Wells is just holding on for dear life. And Hudkins is tight roping the sideline here at Ford Field. Official review is underway right there. It's in, 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 in. And does he slide out there? Again, ruling on the field was a touchdown. Is it conclusive? Let's After further it. review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. That's big time, folks. That's as good a play as you'll see in high school football anywhere in the country when it comes here in the Division Three final. Good ball from Mason McDonald. Tremendous individual effort from Ty Hudkins, who Coach Rogers said is a game breaker on offense. Moeller extra point is good. 62 yard receiving touchdowns. Now got five grabs, 111 yards go with that scoring touchdown reception. Being a good balance offense, you're gonna force guys into the box of one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, and that's exactly what Forest Hill Central get. You see your Purdue commit on the outside on the one-on-one. -on -one. He's just gonna take off, and he's gonna say, I'm gonna throw up a 50-50 ball. Does a good job of stemming behind the defensive back, and just perfect football there by Mason McDonald. And then the effort there by Ty Huckins. You see why he's a special player. You see why he's a game breaker to keep his balance after making a really good catch. He and, get, I mean, he, the contact is there from the 25 yard line. You know, talk Nick about Wells, yards after that, catch. I mean, that's a yak. <laughs> yards, yeah, it's yak. That's 25 yak if yak. I ever seen it. Yeah. Five plays, 78 yards on the drive. And we had, and Mason has him in the third and long. He, Mason McDonald able to convert a big third down conversion with his legs, and then they take a shot on second down. That's special stuff right there. And again, getting the congratulations from his senior center, Jay Coe, playing in his second straight state championship game. And this game is far from over. We talked about one of Sasante's sauces, respond to adversity. You know you're going to see it being your first time in this football game. Can you respond adversely? I think if any team's built for it, it's Mason. Kick is away. And back deep for Mason, Tyler Baker. Baker with the football. Good pursuit on special teams. He's brought down by Brady Drukey. Number 24 in white. Now a message from the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Now with Holiday Cash, returning AZ Plan Escape lessees can lease an escape for $239 a month for 24 months. See your Southeast Michigan Ford dealer today. So now, if you're the Mason Bulldogs, not ideal, but still a lot of football left. We're less than two minutes into the third quarter. You're only down 17. And A.J. Martell is still not back in the football game. Caleb Vaughn is filling in for him at tailback. See how this affects their offensive productivity. They roll Carswell out of the pocket. Now here comes the pursuit from Quinlan Sutherland. And he gets it off and completes the pass to Derek Badgley. So a nice job of extending the play with his legs from the junior. Casey Carswell picks up 15 yards to his senior split end, Derek Badgley. You know, Drukey, Fertino, Huckins on the back end of Forest Hills. Defense is doing a really good job of coverage. But when you got Case and Carswell that can extend the pass game with his legs and throw so well on the run, he's going to convert some of these plays, and it's really hurts your defense. But you had good coverage there, and they still made a play. High formation. Hand it off to the up back. Went to his... Fullback Logan Dorr, but Orion Roskam there to stop him. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you see here, 60 white here, Forest Hill Central Oregon. He's a guy that's up and coming here for the defense. Been stout in the middle, especially second half of the season. And he sees a down block, and he just follows the hip to the ball carrier. Makes a great play tackle for loss. 
loss of two yards on the play. Again, big development in this game. The fact that A.J. Martel, as you alluded to, we saw him go into the tent. And he is on the Mason sideline. Pressure coming. Carswell again extending the play with his legs. Flag comes in. He was looking for Tyler Baker on the outside. Let's see what this penalty marker is all about. Holding, offense, head on penalty, the down remains two. So that'll back up the Bulldogs. And bring up a second and a mile situation. So not things not going in favor of the Bulldogs. Again, adding insult to injury uh, with losing your best player on the football field and now backing yourself up. Uh, into your own territory. Try to get some of this yardage back. Back inside the 20. Here comes pressure. Carswell, nice little pirouette to get rid of it. Caleb Parrish on the receiving end. Parrish gets up to the 26-yard line before he's brought down by Brady Drukey. Six-yard reception. Let's check in with Lexi Ayala. Well, Johnny, I tapped on running back A.J. Martell's shoulder after he came out of the tent and asked him if he's going back in the game. He looked back at me with tears in his eyes, and he said, yeah, I better be. So we'll have to see if coach decides that he's all right, puts him back in TBD on that, Johnny. Very interesting development. Again, that changes the complexion of this Bulldog offense. As Carswell rolling to the near side, looking downfield. He's got Derek Badgley again. Good positive play on third and long. He's going to be short of the sticks, but now down 17. You pick up 13 yards there. You got a fourth and about three. Is it too early to start thinking about it? I think you might have a play in the playbook, but I think you have to punt it right now. Try to get a stop. It's still early in the game. Second half. I think this is might, might, not a bad time to pull out a fake punt if you have something or a hard count. See if you can get a, a cheap first down there. Tyler Baker. Lines up to punt it for Mason and back deep. There's Ty Hudkins, the big playmaker for the Rangers. Baker gets it, and there's the fake. Baker's got it. He's got room. Tyler Baker, you call it partner. First down, Mason Bulldogs. Crowd comes alive. Anytime you're in that range of 40 to 40, it's a great time to run a fake punt especially when you're getting get momentum back. You see it, it's kind of like I can roll it and kick it if I decide. I see some guys open, but sees the left side open up completely with the defensive end crashing and gets the first down. Great job by Tyler Baker. Good patience right here. I'm not giving the play away. They needed three. He got eight. First down, Bulldogs. Showing a little fight, a little grit. Carswell. Oh, pressure coming. And he gets swallowed up. J.T. Hartman. Feeder. Feeder. Loss yeah. of nine on the play. Yeah, I see the pressures coming from the inside and the outside here. All right, they come off a sudden change. They get it. They don't have enough to pick it up. Beats the block. Good job by the running back picking up the outside blitz there. But they just get a big play that they need for Hill Central to push them back. Carswell right. fakes the handoff, back to pass. Throwing, oh, he had his man, but it just off the fingertips of Caleb Parrish, normally the sure-handed tight end. But remember, we talked about it, been playing with that cast. You can see on the left hand, coach said it took him a couple days to figure it out, but he'd been catching almost everything in the playoffs. But right here, looks like it might have bounced right off that cast. Yeah, and you'd like to see his open hands facing the football, but with that cast, he has to almost try to cradle it. And that's why he dropped the ball. You don't see many of those for Caleb Parrish. Again, really tough, especially in a position like that. If you've never worn a cast, those things are hard. I mean, it's hard to try to cradle anything into the body right there. And that looks like what happened. Just bounced off the cast. So now third and a mile. We'll call it third and 18. Coswell back over the middle. And this time, no cast, no problem. Caleb Parrish, first down Bulldogs. Brady Drukey in on the stop. 
but just a fabulous job. 21 yard gain to atone for the earlier drop. Well, you're going to get this half boot from right here. You're going to see that you got the tight end down, and you're going to expect to get action all to the right, but he pulls up off the boot. It's a half boot, and he hits the seam right down the middle. Great job making up for that drop pass there. Caleb Parrish making plays all year for Mason. Needed 18, got 21, play pass. And now just working it to his senior tight end, Caleb Parrish, with another couple of yards. Brady Drukey, Jacob Harleton in on the stop. Give him six yards on first down, bring up second and four. Six minutes to play here in the third. And, you know, with A.J. Martell out, you have to go to your quick game, which they've been really good. Quick games, boots, and screens, and they're starting to find some production here. Fakes the handoff to Caleb Vaughn. Rolling right, Carswell looking downfield, threading the needle, and it is caught by Derek Badgley. They call him a quiet leader, but he's got 500 yards receiving on the season. He can get it done. And you see here on the boot, 44 comes into the flats. He's wide open, but eyes are on for Casey Car Carswell the whole time. He wants to hit his big tight end coming across the middle on that flood route, and they, he sure does get him. He hits him right in the numbers, and we talked about his accuracy to be able to move the pocket and throw on the run has been unbelievable all year. That window was closing quickly. They pick up 12 yards. That'll move the chains. Looking to pass again, getting him on the move. Another catch, Derek Basley. Finding a little rhythm here, finding a little identity, playing up tempo. Derek Basley's been playing great on defense. Now he's starting to step up on offense here. Somebody else has to make plays other than Caleb Parrish. And you're seeing this quarterback, why he's one of the better in the state, really making some plays, getting some confidence, and really being the general out there for the offense. Second and six, under five minutes to play here in the third. Carswell looking for the end zone. Parrish is there, but a great job by Jacob Harleton, number 22 in white, to get up there and knock the football away. Good coverage. Yeah, Mason Crowd wants a pass interference here. You see that he's getting on a he, he's on, on a smaller defensive back, so he's gonna throw on that one-on-one -on -one matchup all day. He gets that arm out there. It's kind of the hand fighting is going in simultaneously, so they're not gonna call that. Good job looking back to the football, getting the outstretched right arm, and that'll bring up third and six. Carswell, let's try it again. Parrish reaching out with one hand. Again in coverage is Jacob Arlington. Incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. And I'll tell you who's selling out today is Caleb Parrish. Kid's been working hard, running downfield. Look at how close this one is with the cast again. If he doesn't have to deal with a broken hand, he might be able to haul that one in. Two hands, you make it all day. He's seeing that press coverage, so I don't blame Chad Somerville and the OC for Mason taking that shot again. We got a bigger wide receiver on a smaller defensive back, but really good job there by defensive back to make a play. Fourth and six. Two on the play clock. Got to get it off. They do. Carswell. Got his target. Right at the marker. Derek Badgley. Is it enough? Yes, sir. Ray. First down, Mason. They got eight yards. Jacob Hartland, the defensive back over there, has got a lot of action coming his way. They're throwing different receivers at them. They're working that short side of the field. Quick game. Big play there. Again, Casey Carswell, you see why he's a competitor he is. He's really throwing those footballs on a dime. Great reception by Derek Badgley to set up a really good scoring opportunity. They can pick up a first down without a touchdown, but Mason will call timeout. Again, late in the play clock. And again, down by three scores. You want to make sure you get it right. 4.35 remaining in the third quarter. What a heck of a football game and a heck of a drive for the Mason Bulldogs who are playing a little shorthanded. Their senior stud running back, A.J. Martell, unable to play here in the second half. Back to live action. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. Mason Bulldogs in blue and red. 
Has sustained a nice drive here, Carswell. He's got space, Casey Carswell. Down to the five yard line. Brought down by Nolan Hartle, number 21 in white. That'll bring up second down. Again, they can pick up a first down inside the one yard line. Approaching four minutes to play in the third. We call that a savvy football player. He's going to take what you give him. He sees it open up in the middle. They've been putting some pressure with the pass game on this drive, and he takes exactly, puts him in the second and short in the red zone. Doing a very good job managing the offense on this drive. Carswell out of the shotgun. Watch for the slant. Carswell again. Throwing it, but missing. Looking for Caleb Parrish. He's looking for his tight end in the end zone, but good coverage by Ty Hutkins and that Ranger defense. Got to bring a third. I was expecting them to throw the slant to the outside. You see at the top of the numbers there, really had nobody in the outside linebacker window, and you really got good one-on-one -on -one matchup there to throw that slant. I'd have liked to see Kaysen run it there. He's been really effective on his feet on a couple plays. Let's see what they do here. Maybe look for a quick bubble. Try to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup for the block on the top of the numbers. Two of eight on third down. This is obvious four-down territory. Carswell. With his legs, Carswell leaning, gets to about the two and a half yard line. And a flag comes in late, and that could go against Forest Hill Central as the lid came off of Kaysen Carswell. Big hitting there in the middle of the pile, but Carswell at 6'3, 185 pounds, was fighting for every yard he could get. After the play is over, personal foul on the defense. That'll be half the distance to the goal, which will result in a first down. Yeah, design quarterback run. As big as Ty Huckins made that play, that was a, a play that Coach Rogers isn't going to be very happy with. The play was dead. They didn't get it. And, uh, you know, has to use his head in that situation. Gives Mason a great opportunity to go down 20 to 10. When a personal foul goes against Ty Huckins, you can tell he... You know, heat a battle in the moment right there. Let it get away from him. He knew it, tried to lay off. But again, when you're in there, you and I have been there. In a game of this magnitude, you're just fighting, fighting, fighting. And sometimes that whistle blows. And you say, I got one last thing I got to say or I got to do. And this one's going to hurt the Rangers. So that'll be a first down. It would have been fourth and about one and a half. It is still third down. Again, in the high school rule, you don't get the automatic, you get the half the distance on that personal foul. So it's going to be third down again. And there, Derek Badgley on the direct snap takes it in for the touchdown. The Bulldogs are back in this football game. So we hadn't seen much of that, them going to the Wildcat. We saw the Wildcat earlier in the game with A.J. Martell. This time they bring in Derek Badgley, the senior. And he takes it right up the gut. And now Mason a point away from making a 10-point ball game. Colin Winters in to try the point after, and he splits it. Heck of a play call by Gary Houghton. Got to get creative. That they were. Touchdown, Mason Bulldogs. 3.26 remaining here in quarter number three. Back after this. Welcome back to Ford Field for the D3 High School Football State Finals. After a Mason touchdown, it's just 10 to 20. Forest Hill Central still up, but Mason senior class is a group that's been together since they were just little tykes. They've been playing football, basketball, and wrestling together since third grade. But they haven't just been teammates throughout the years. Mason's senior class is a brotherhood. Coach, Coach Houghton said that the second practice is over, they don't split up. They stay together. They do everything together. It's the competitive culture that raises the bar every day at practice. Because as Coach Houghton says, iron sharpens iron. They all want to outdo one another. And they have since they were in elementary school. 
But the key in keeping this squad so close isn't just that they do everything together, it's that they've been through everything together. And whether it's the good, the bad, or the ugly, the love and the loyalty is consistent. Appreciate that, Lex. Tell you what, having a team full of seniors makes a big difference. But there is a maturity, physically, mentally, and emotionally. You can't fake it, can't coach it. This Mason team has it. Ty Hudkins, the deep man from Forest Hills Central, and he is brought down just beyond the 20-yard line. Logan Door in on the stop. So Mason with a 18-play, 83-yard drive. Carswell on that drive, how about eight of 10 for 85 yards? Had to get inventive after losing your star running back. Uh, he's passed for 2,371 yards, 30 touchdowns and two interceptions for the season. So you know he has it in him. I thought a great job by those linebackers turned to offensive players, Bagley, Dorr, and Vaughn doing a great job at running back, blocking and running the football. Rangers back on offense, Mason McDonald with the quarterback keeper. Nice gain on first down. Caleb Vaughn in on the stop. That's a gain of five. You have to have a great appreciation for Max Richardson. He is in the mix every single time on both sides of the ball. They are depending on him to be the hammer to lead the quarterback in those QB powers, those QB leads. And he's been doing a really good job of getting three to four yards when they need it. McDonald brings motion. Ty Ryan, the motion man. Instead, they pitch it out to J.T. Hartman. First down, Rangers. Caleb Parrish in on the stop. Called his name a bunch today. Seven yards for J.T. Hartman. Get that shoulder pad back in the uniform. And Caleb Parrish getting a little bit of help from Nick Wells. Really good job by Forest Hill Central. They'll get that spread offense look, get everybody out of the box, and then give that quick pitch where the defensive end can't get there quick enough. And you have outside linebackers coming from some depth. That's going to take some while. They've made a couple first downs on that play today. First and 10. Ball at the 32 yard line. McDonald. A couple of tough yards. Give him three yard gain on first down. Not two minutes remaining here in the third. In on the stop, Connor O'Sipson. Look at that helmet. Connor's helmet. Looks like it's been involved in. Looks like it got run over. I mean, that. <laughs> look at that thing. He's been tough I inside mean, <laughs> all day. He's had a great season. He's been tough inside all day for the Mason Bulldogs. Pirate, pirate, pirate. Second seven. They fake the jet sweep again. Okay. Pressure coming. Good throw underneath from Mason McDonald. He found Ty Ryan. And up near the 40-yard line. Oh, Mason McDonald's going to want that one back when he watches film. He had a wide open wide receiver. I didn't catch the number. Wide open wide receiver coming down the sideline. Opened up pretty late. They did not cover him. But the coordinator saw that they're going to come right back to it. When you start having to stack the box for Mason, you start opening up either one-on-one -on -one coverage or broken coverage because you're concerned about the run. Big play here, key third down. Third and two, under a minute. There's the Mason fan base. Maybe the biggest crowd we've seen all weekend to this point. Holding up their go red and go blue signs. Timeout, Forest Hills Central. You know, teams, players, and coaches work hard all week getting ready for the game. So do the officials. Local officials meetings across the state every week help the men and women calling the action stay on top of their game. Let's give them the respect they deserve, better yet. Why don't you become one? Visit the MHSAA website for more information. There's help wanted. Just whistle. A quick shout out to our officiating crew here in Division Three. There's Mark Coscarella, joined by Chad Fuller, Rob Stanaway, Greg Lott, Michael Dunlop, Ben Hall, and Randy Reese. Doing a heck of a job out there today, fellas. We appreciate your dedication to high school athletics, and we got a good football game. All the games have been great, haven't they? Yeah, it's the best weekend of football. It is. Best Co college of and high school. It doesn't get any better Thanksgiving weekend. I'm looking for Max Richardson to be snuck out into a route here. You've seen him just come to be the hammer on the nail and the offense, running that power. You got him in a tight bunch. 
Four of seven on third down. The pitch. Hartman. They had initial pursuit. Hartman written out of bounds. He's not going to get there. Caleb Parrish drives him out of bounds. Derek Badgley, the first to get there. And Parrish takes him out of bounds for a loss of two. And that'll bring up fourth and four. Really good job. When you're getting that quick pitch to the boundary, it's hard to really get any room. And the Mason defense did a phenomenal job of reading it, staying home, not getting caught up in some what they thought was a pass formation. And now we got a fourth down. Big conversion here. They're going for the championship. Fourth and four. They're going for it. And now flag comes in. And Ball that's going to go against Forest Hill Central. Prior to the play, illegal procedure on the offense. Five-yard penalty, the down remains four. And now they're going to punt the football. So appreciate what it takes to make that decision for Coach Rogers to say, you know what, we're going to go get it. But an illegal procedure, and now you say, on it, let's punt the football away. Yeah, you got Alex Korff there, just got a little twitchy. Eli Lipke get the play there. Eli Lipke back to punt it away. Tyler Baker back deep for the Bulldogs. Lipke line drive punt should be returnable. And at the 32 yard line it'll be Tyler Baker who just falls on top of it again with that line drive didn't leave him much room to maneuver. 35 yard punt no return but the Bulldogs down 10 with a chance. Hey, coming up, the third game of our day, it's the Division Five State Championship, which features the Cougars of Grand Rapids Catholic Central and the Cavaliers of Corona. Kickoff scheduled shortly after 4 o'clock here on Valley Sports Detroit and also on the Valley Sports app. How do you see that one going? Well, my former <laughs> college coach, Coach Colster, is the head coach over there, and Mill, the Thrill Coleman son, is out there now since he moved out to Grand Rapids. So I know that they're going to have their hands full, but Corona, great to see small town coming up and playing hard. There's a fake handoff, and Casey Carswell keeps it himself. And brought down by JT Hartman and Orion Roscom. And that could take us to the end of the third quarter. And I tell you what, they've had to, with the development of A.J. Martell, going out due to an injury they've had to change the way they think about playing this football game no doubt i think some design quarterback runs you're gonna have to find somebody else to keep them honest inside so they know they're not just pinning their back airs back and rushing you see him limping out there trying to get back into the football game which you got you got to admire his courage but also what's best for the football team what's best for the young man i think as mason you have to design the quarterback run Get some screens because they're going to start pinning their airs back knowing that you want to throw the football. So let's see what they can do here in the fourth quarter. It's going to end up being an exciting end to this game. 12 minutes left to decide the Division Three championship. Cue up the band. We got a good one. This special presentation of the MHSAA Football Finals on Bally Sports Detroit is brought to you by Trinity Health. We see all of you by Figer Law. All we do is win. And by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. Start of the fourth. Hold them up, ladies. 12 minutes left to decide this championship game. Look at that stone face there on the end. Be a good poker player. Here we go. Mason Bulldogs with the football. Second down, ball spotted at the 31 yard line. Carswell over the back. He's got Caleb Parrish. Big first down reception from the senior tight end. Jacob Harleton able to bring him down. But that is a big play for 23 yards. Yeah, you see here, you get into this quarter's coverage and you got one safety outside, you can't see here. And all they're gonna do is keep working this tight end right down the middle of the two in the scene, get past that middle linebacker and you throw it in the window in case of Carswell has been immaculate here these last couple drives. Look at that, he's got one good hand. <laughs> and that is one good man. He says, first down Bulldogs. Carswell back to pass, 
They brought the kitchen sink at him, able to get rid of it. And Ty Hudkins was right on him. Orion Roscom in pursuit as well. Said his name a lot today. I like, I like the way Forest Hill Central brings blitzes from different positions. You're not going to just see it from the linebacker or outside linebacker. You're going to see safeties, their money position. You're going to see some uh, stunts there by the defensive line. Getting home there, though, on a screen, which I love the play call by Mason, just couldn't complete it. Second and 10. Carswell slings it out to Caleb Vaughn. Vaughn unable to complete the catch. Then Caleb Vaughn in this ball game, the junior, hasn't gotten a ton of run. They haven't called on him a lot this season with A.J. Martell, but here in the big game, got him out on the screen, but just a little too hot to handle. Probably better he didn't catch it. Uh, Drew Key was coming up uh, like a missile to, to, to hit him. Might have had a, a tackle for loss. Big play here. I think go back to trying to attack the middle of the field in this, this quarter's coverage. Twin receivers at the top of the screen. And again, they sling out Vaughn. Coswell with time steps into the throw. Picked off by JT Hartman. Hartman up near midfield, and he is brought down by Caleb Parrish. But Cason Coswell throws the pick, and Hartman. It's the student body of the Rangers up off their feet on a 15-yard return. There is a flag on the field, and we'll sort this one out. Ah. So we do have an injured player on the field. And it looks like that is Quinlan Sutherland. Again, the senior defensive lineman plays that nose guard position. And the medical staff taking a look uh, you're gonna at see, young Quinlan Southern. See, Case and Carswell is going to want this one back. Great job by JT Hartman sitting in the window. But you see that slot right at the top of the numbers, wide open. He sits down, and he wanted that football. Kept going back to the well one time, one time too many to Kayla Mersh. Caleb Parrish and so you see here Hartman just reading he's supposed to sit in the window here reading the eyes of the quarterback in that quarter's coverage he's just sinking the eyes reading the eyes he sees the crossing route we call that a robot or to make sure you sit in the window and he does exactly that again he had Bagley on the other side in the slot he's going to watch film of that and want that one back and just try to force it to Caleb Parrish one too many times well keep in mind you know our stats man Mikey Brad is the best in the biz brought back our attention 30 touchdowns two picks on the year for young Casey Carswell he's got two picks here today and nice to see Quinlan Sutherland to his feet and he will walk off under his own power again the senior defensive lineman after the interception illegal block in the back on the intercepting team that'll be 10 yards from the spot of the foul first down. so Forest Hills Central Gets the football back. They've got a 10-point lead, a little momentum swing. Mason looking for the big play. Got to take a few more chances. And again, playing a little bit shorthanded, but not just playing shorthanded offensively, are they? No, hey, look, and defensively as well, A.J. Martell is one of those players that makes everybody around him better, and he's also a very significant football player for them in the secondary there for Mason. So they're missing out on that, but there's no excuses in a championship game. Everybody's hurting. Everybody has someone out. I know that's a big one for them. They're going to have to step up to the occasion. Sudden change we talked about in the sauce earlier. Have to respond here to stay in this football game. Ball at the 33-yard line. McDonald keeps it himself, picks up a couple of yards. That'll bring up second and eight. Grant Gilchrist in on the stop for the Mason defense. Again, Johnny Kane, Justin Sasante, and Lexi Ayala on the call with you for this Division Three championship game. We got a couple of options here as a Forest Hill Central offense. You want to go take a shot and try to have a back-breaking play, or do you just keep pounding the football, try to get some first downs, run down the clock, and oppose your will? Hudkins in motion to the top of the screen. McDonald looking that way. Hudkins met immediately by Caleb Parrish, who lays the wood. 
That'll bring up third down. I mean, how many defensive players do you see at defensive end, uh, outside linebacker, and then putting them in coverage? I mean, he's all over the place. Caleb Parrish has been really that guy for them today that's had to step up one hand, as we talked about throughout the whole entire playoffs, and he's just played a phenomenal game. A Mason defense could use a stop in the worst way. Two minutes gone by here in the fourth quarter. And a timeout on the field, and it'll be Coach Tim Rogers who wants to talk it over on that Forest Hills Central sideline. Time now for our Menards big money moment. And I'm going to tell you right now, this might have been the play of the year, certainly the play of the weekend. Reaching back to pass Mason McDonald. Initial contact comes at about the 25-yard line for Ty Hodkins. He's being ridden down by Nick Wells, but he keeps carrying him. Tight roping, leaning, stretching, scoring 62 yards for Ty Hodkins, who will be playing football on Saturdays in the Big Ten in West Lafayette, Indiana, for the Purdue Boilermakers. Here's what he's done today. Again, will play safety most likely at the next level, but talented on offense as well. He's gone north of 100 yards here today. And of course, that big scoring strike. Here's our player, Scott Schwer, Schwer from uh, Saginaw. That was the safety I played at Purdue. They remind me a lot of each other. This was years ago. Uh, great track athlete up there uh, from Saginaw, but reminds me a lot of that young man. Third and four. McDonald, pressure coming. McDonald, ball. Knocked down, and Brennan Miller looks like from the nose guard position, big Brennan Miller. He goes 6'3", 330 pounds. You don't want to get in a phone booth with him. He knocks it down. That brings up fourth down and decision time. Forest Hill Central looks like they're keeping their offense out on the field. On their side of the 40-yard line. You like the call? Not uh, surprising to me, but if you want this championship, you believe in your team, uh, who's us to judge? Fourth and four. Might try a hard count here. Just get him off. Nope, they're going. Oh, punt. McDonald with the punt. Got a nice punt away. Tyler Baker back deep for Mason. And that ball will roll inside the 20-yard line. So a nice roll. And a nice job by Forest Hills Central. Mason McDonald didn't need much room to get that one booted away from the 43 yards and no return. Thought they were going for it. Oh, Riverboat Rogers, 20 to 10. Back out of this. Well, folks, we're here to tell you there's plenty of fight in these Bulldogs from Mason. Let's take you back to the regional final against Wald Lake Western. They had to come from behind in overtime. There's Caleb Parrish with the cast on the left hand. Raise it up. He says, I got you. 44-41, Mason comes from behind to get the victory. Same cast, different color. And here we are. They've got to race a 10-point deficit here in quarter number four. Still plenty of game time left. Nine minutes, 32 seconds left in this football game. And out of the timeout. Mason with the ball at the 17-yard line. Carswell rolling to his left. Carswell looking down, failed! Carswell! Derek Badgley, what a catch! What a throw here by Kaysen, what a catch by Bagley. I think he's becoming the unsung hero of this football game on both sides of the ball. Does a great job of just ducking it. What the accuracy, how hard it is to boot away from a pursuit, to square up your shoulders and get it to the re attended receiver, and he does just a phenomenal job. I don't know if that ball hit the ground. They're going to probably, well, they can't challenge that, can they not? Now, that would be, you can challenge on possession, or potential possession or turnover. Forest Hill Central is challenging the play on the field for a complete pass. So let's take a look at it again. Here we go. Here's the reviewable challenge you mentioned. Yeah. Completed pass at the top of the chart. 
I thought at first, well, obviously at first glance, looked like he was able to bring it in. But we'll see. Again, they ruled it a, ca a catch on the field, so they're going to have to have evidence that it was not. All good here. And I think he pins it between his, between the thigh That's and the close. forearm. Uh, That's a completed catch. I'll tell you, the, the interception they, they called earlier on Forest Hill Central, if they, they sure. withheld that. I, the Ty Hutkins INT, right? Yeah. It looked like he snow coned it a little bit and went off the turf. Now, right here, you see the ball. I don't know how ball much does shift a little bit, yeah. but doesn't look like it ever hits the Ford Field turf. That's close. That's a heck of an effort by Derek Badgley. Again, they say he's not all that vocal, more of a quiet leader on this team. But certainly a guy they count on in big plays. They say he leads by example. And right here, look at this example. That's close. This, ladies and gentlemen, we encourage you to look into becoming an official, but it ain't an easy job. It is not. I took officiating a football when I was in college in my very first game. I was... <laughs> I said, I'm not sure if this is it for me. Well, I couldn't handle it. You hope more parents and coaches have grace and empathy for their position and what they're trying to do for these young men. And uh, Overall, in the state of Michigan, we, we, we do have some good officials. Uh, you got the best of the best working in these state finals. Let's say that again. Again, very important. Remind everybody, the call on the field is a completed pass, and the officials, as they do review it on the monitor, they're looking at the exact same views that you just saw. And our head referee today, Mark Coscarella. After a further review, the runner did not maintain control of the football all the way to the ground. It is an incomplete pass. Still second down. So there's that. The call is overturned. And what went from a major first down for Mason, uh, now back some way back up inside the 20 yard line again i'll tell you all, all i ask as a coach is to be consistent so if you uh, you know if that was ruled, ruled incomplete in the first place then i understand if they withheld that but uh you know calling an interception and that catch uh you got to almost say that 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 was the same type of play obviously on the other side of the ball but it is what it is and they're gonna have to fight through it another uh, obstacle here for mason's offense that's a tough call to go against these bulldogs but it is second and 10. Carswell now using his legs. Found a little seam. Sits down at about the 23-yard line. That'll bring up third down. Six yards on the carry. Again, in games like this, like you said, you got to keep your composure. If something goes against you, you feel maybe you're not getting a fair shake. You got to continue to play out this football game. Keep your mind in the right place. And that's what Mason, Mason's got to do here. Now third and five. Just two of 10 on third down all afternoon long. Need a play here. Carswell, here comes pressure. Able to dance out of it, rolling left. Carswell still looking. Hot pursuit from Cedar Middaw. Carswell crossed his body. He's got Derek Badgley again. And Badgley, big time Badgley with another first down. There is a penalty marker on the field. Either a hold or a late hit. Oh, my. Cason Carswell scrambling for his life. Derek Badgley was the safety valve. He threw across his body. That would be a first down. But let's see. Oh, this Mason crowd's not going to be happy if you get a holding call here. Coach Gary Houghton looks on. Blindside block on the offense. Ouch. That ball will be marked from the previous spot, half the distance to the goal. We'll keep it down. Well, when you've got a scrambling quarterback, take another look. Right here, you have 54. That's Connor Osipsic. Uh, you know, you got to see the front of his numbers uh, in the magnitude of this game right now. It's a tough call. Got to see the front of his numbers. I think calling the blindside hit wasn't quite correct. I think it was more of a clip, if anything. 
So it was Osipsic who got Lucas Fors, the senior defensive lineman from Forest Hills Central, and that backs him up. So now you've got third and 16. Carswell stepping up in the pocket. Carswell makes the first man miss. Now past the 20, and he got hit hard at about the 23-yard line. Max Richardson in on the stop. Make it a gain of 12. So he'll take care of what he can. And once he starts scrambling, I know that the Mason receivers are very familiar with you. Either come back to the football or you break away from the defensive back. Uh, just cannot find any. Forest Hill Central in that quarter's coverage and athleticism they have on the back end has done a tremendous job, even bending a little bit, but not completely breaking. Now Mason is three of three on fourth down. This is the biggest fourth down they have faced to this point. Play clock down to five, fourth and five. Carswell. Here comes pressure. Carswell picked off and coming the other way. Drew Fortino for the pick six for the Forest Hills Central Rangers. Interceptions on the day for Kaysen Carswell. It was JT Hartman who brought the pressure and Drew Fortino who goes 25 yards on the pick six and that may just do it here in this football game. Point after is good from Alex Muller. Another look at it, Justin Sasante. Yeah, you feel for Casey Carswell. He's had to do a lot more with A.J. Martell out, but just forces it with the blitz down the middle. Great call there by the Forest Hill Central defense. And Drew Fortino, Fortino, excuse me, takes it all the way, pick six, and maybe it put a stamp on the state championship ring and banner there for Forest Hill Central. Mason's got a lot of fight. We'll see what they do and how they respond when they come back. Welcome back to your D3 MHSAA High School Football State Finals, where Forest Hill Central leads Mason 27 to 10. And in a day and age of social media, Twitter fingers, and keyboard warriors, Forest Hill Central's head coach, Tim Rogers, prioritizes the slogan, Just Prove It. I know Johnny and I have mentioned this earlier today, but Coach Rogers said that this slogan was an important life lesson for his team to learn early on, not just on the football field, but to carry into life with them. Instead of telling everyone what you can do and saying whatever you want to say, especially online, just prove it on the field, every practice, every game, and in life. Johnny? That's oh, great, Lexi. And, and, and you know, as, as Coach Rogers said, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who are humble will be exalted. Forest Hills Central last year, again, after being humbled in the state championship finals, against Warren D. LaSalle. They are in the driver's seat now with seven minutes and 13 seconds remaining. Tyler Baker back deep, but they won't get it to the deep man. It is Sam Corey and Mason, as you mentioned, still a lot of fight. They've shown comeback effort as they had against Wall Lake Western. Nobody's beaten him this year. Undefeated season and as you had talked in one of our commercial breaks, what's tough is everybody's playing through stuff. When you get to week 14, it's tough, tough, tough. And not everybody's healthy, but when you see the best of the best in the division come together, and unfortunately you don't get to see all the best players shine right on this stage, it's just unfortunate for the fans and certainly for all these players that put so much into it, and that's what's happened here today. Yeah, and we even talked about Forest Hill Central. Mason McDonald has a, a basically a broken toe playing on it, so seeing a lot of guys play injured. And Dom Rodriguez, the ball carrier for the Mason Bulldogs. Brought down by Nolan Harlow. We'll give him four yards on the play. 
Chris the, Carey for Dom Rodriguez. One of the hardest things in these smaller divisions is depth. You just don't have it. You don't have the numbers that some of the Division II, Division I schools have. And uh, just having depth at this time and be able to have endurance and stamina throughout the, the, the grind of the season. Second and six. Carswell rolling. Completed pass to Derek Badgley. And Badgley able to dive forward. That'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. Drew Fortino, who just had the pick six, able to get in on the stop. And Coach Rogers always praising Fortino's accountability on the football field. Made a couple of big plays in this football game. And now Rogers. Excuse me, Carswell now. You're battling the clock and the scoreboard. Need a couple of scores and need them quickly. Able to elude the pressure. Carswell looking downfield, and this one sails out of bounds. He was looking for Caleb Parrish. And there's another look at A.J. Martell. Again, continuing to encourage, but unable to go here in the second half with an injury in the lower half. And there's a look at, you want to talk about emotional leadership, but as far as the tangibles of what he brings, that's what's not on the football field right now for the Bulldogs. Yeah, you feel for that young man too, because you know he's such a true competitor. If he could be out there, he would. Uh, having to watch his brothers go in battle without him is, is, is so tough. Carswell tried dumping it off to the backup running back, Caleb Vaughn, and that one incomplete. It's gonna bring up third, and 10. They have to pull all the tricks out of the bag right now. Any type of double reverse, stop, pass, pass. I know Forest Hill Central is going to be uh, most likely anticipating that. But anything that you can create some type of matchup or numbers, you need a big play here to stay in this football third game. And third and 10 now for the Mason Bulldogs. Extremely close group. They have not accepted losing. And today, facing a position. They just point blank haven't been in double digit deficit late in the second half. Nice dump off for Caleb Parrish. Good play call, and that is a first down on third and 10. Cedar Middaw in on the stop for Forest Hill Center. Gain of 18 yards on the play. Caleb Parrish having a heck of a football game. Yeah, when you know this, the defense starts pinning their ears back, expecting pass, the best way you can counterpunch that is a screen. They use a tight end screen here, just slip them in behind the offensive line, and he gets a good first down. Coswell's Kay pass incomplete. Caleb Parrish, uh, you know, uh, Bagley, uh, even, even obviously Case and Carswell have had a, had a great day. Uh, Case in, in, in the offense of Mason. Definitely not wanting to be what they've been all year, and that's balanced uh, with the injury to A.J. Martell. And is forced, uh, you know, the, the give credit to credit due, Forest Hill Central defense forcing three interceptions, one more than he's thrown all year. Carswell back to pass again, going to use his legs. That passed the 40 and brought down Cedar Middaw again in on the stop, number 84 in white, as well as Quinlan Sutherland, number 55. As you talked about, again, when you have that balance, that's what makes them to so tough to stop this year. And part of the preparation, I think, for both of these teams, I mean, you, know, you look at a ton of tape and you say, we want to make sure we're not too predictable this week when you're running the spread offense. And now when you become predictable, right, now you're in obvious passing situations, right, because you're up against the clock, just changes the whole dynamic of the game. But credit for us, Hill Central. I mean, they have, they've done a whale of a job defensively in this game. And they run and pursue with the best of them, and they've definitely showed this here in the second half. Carswell tried to come back across. He was looking for Logan Doerr, his fullback, who swung out. But, again, Drew Fortino and Max Richardson bringing pressure against Kaysen Carswell. And that's going to bring up fourth and seven. They've had a lot of success attacking that middle of the field, but you have to get the ball out quick before that middle linebacker can get depth in that quarters. you got the two safety split there, uh, high safeties, and you have to really try to, again, go back to either Bagley or Parrish. You've been doing it for you all day. Fourth down. 
Carswell slings it out to Vaughn. Oh, he was stood up by Ty Hopkins. Caleb Vaughn, the junior running back, got close to a first down, but Ty Hopkins was right there, and he laid the lumber, and that'll be a turnover on downs. You can't take that play for granted. Ty Huckins shows why he's a power five commit coming down from a high safety to get there on a swing pass and make that play before he gets first down. Just listen to football. And Drew Fortino, who initially slowed him up, there's Fortino, and then on the pirouette, and Hudkins right there for the finish. Defense wins championships, and their defense has showed up today. 11 hats around the ball. They run and hit. They pursue to the football, and everybody wants a piece. Come my way mentality. Done a really good job here today. Forest Hill Central defense leading them to the state championship. Mason McDonald following a convoy. Picks up about six or seven yards on first down. And this uh, Forest Hills Central crowd, this Rangers student body, they see themselves on the big screen. Say, look how good we look. They got a day off tomorrow, I guarantee that. No school on that day. <laughs> we were all there once, folks. And nothing better. Rooting on your school in the state championship game here in downtown Detroit. No sleep till Grand Rapids. The ball carrier, Mason McDonald, and he gets right near the first down marker. And I'll tell you what, you look at, again, the job that Tim Rogers has done. Looks like we do have an injured ball player on the field. And it looks like number 74 blue, Grant Gilchrist, the senior defensive tackle, and could be cramping. You hope it's just cramping at this stage of the game. And if you've ever dealt with those, you know that ain't a lot of fun. And Gilchrist able to walk off under his own power. But as mentioned, when you get to this level, you know, again, this Mason football team, you know, hadn't been here before. You get an opportunity to taste it for the first time. Gary Houghton's done such a heck of a good job. And a lot of times it comes in stages, right? So we mentioned they've been to the state semis, but you, you, you lose to Detroit King two years in a row, and you say, well, what are we supposed to do? I mean, King was the superior team. And now you get to the championship game, and you get this close. It's going to do nothing but do great things for the future of this program no as doubt. they continue to build. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and the charm of the, the communities that are still together and have kids playing since elementary school, you know, especially in Metro Detroit, we just don't get that anymore. Um, and, and to see that and see both teams and bring their communities out the way they have on a Sunday afternoon uh, is pretty special. And, and really what, what exemplifies Michigan high school football and what's so special about it on this holiday weekend. Yeah, this group, as Lexi mentioned earlier, been playing together going back to the third grade. And then you add the addition of the quarterback, Casey Carswell, who will be back. You know, Carswell is just a junior, so you got an opportunity you know, next year to do something special as well. We might be seeing these two teams in the state championship again next year. There's a handoff to J.T. Hartman. Hartman leaning forward in Forest Hills Central. Content to keep the football on the ground. Under four minutes to play here in the fourth. And there's Tim Rogers. You know, I mentioned them beating Zeeland West. You know, I asked him what that showed him about his team. And again, he, he felt like, you know, those guys always try to, you know, you want to win warm-ups is what they talk about. You want to win warm-ups, you go out there and say, okay, I feel good about the size of our guys and athleticism of our guys. That Zeeland West team, man, they had to fight. Uh, to win that one. They won one while they almost didn't win the game, but they were able to do so. Um, and now they put themselves in this position. So 12 years at the helm in the green and white and Forest Hills Central, three and a half minutes away from claiming a championship as Mason calls timeout. Time now for the player of the game brought to you by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. And it is number five in white, Ty Hudkins. Ty Huckins, what a tremendous athlete, lives up to 
Uh, you hear all these guys get offers, but a game breaker uh, in its truest form. Uh, interception on defense, really set the tone, hitting it and coming down hard from the safety spot, making big plays there on offense. Uh, one really that opened up the game, and you can hear this young man play football. You don't have to see him, and he's done a tremendous job. Uh, Coach Rogers said in our interview this week, when he plays, everybody around him plays better, and that's a true definition of a leader, and he's led his team to a state championship today. And also, some guys just look like football players, and he looks like a football player. McDonald keeps it on the ground. McDonald picks up a first down. Grant Gilchrist was dealing with some cramping moments ago. Back out there for the Bulldog defense. He brings him down, but not before he picks up 10 yards. Yeah, and that big offensive line, give him some credit here. Uh, the guys, Joey Wing, who leads that offensive line, Jay Cole, Lucas Fors. Uh, uh, Roscombe, who, who's also on defense, and Alex Korff, they have leaned on Mason's uh, defensive line. And a lot of that because they've had some really long drives and kept Mason's defense out on the field the majority of this game. Well, McDonald, quarterback for Forest Hills Central, as Coach Rogers said, he could be a drop back passer in pretty much anybody's system, but he's got the ability to run the football as he runs it here, and he's able to extend plays that way. Yeah, they'll take shots downfield with their receivers, as we saw, obviously, the big play to Ty Hudkins. But, you know, they want to run the football. They want to eat up possession, keep the defense off the field. And that's what they've been able to do. I mean, really a, a masterful game plan. They've been able to execute the game plan. And Mason McDonald, you know, not just a running back who can throw the ball. I think maybe that doesn't, uh, doesn't speak to how good he is uh, as a passer. But in this offense, as Tim Rodgers finally cracks a little <laughs> smile, he's chomping on that trident as they are now two minutes and 15 seconds away from title town. Well, I thought that Forest Hill Central did a good job of going to the pass game uh, early in the game when they didn't necessarily have to. They were still getting some success uh, running the football. And what that did was really open up, uh, you know, get, get, get the defense out of the box and allow them to go back to powering the football. You got the guys like JT Hartman, uh, Max Richardson, and that offensive line we just spoke of really opened up holes and coming downhill some big, strong, fast guys. Uh, you know, he might be Division Three, but uh, a lot of athletes out there that look like a Division One program. And there's a big hug. as Ty Hudkins uh, giving a little shout out to the coaching staff over there on the far sideline. And, and going back real quick to Tim Rogers, you know, he said last time we were here, it was a novelty, right? It was a novelty to get here. They wanted to change the way they do things after you. you, know, you take, it is something special to be here. If you've never even been to Ford Field, it's one thing. And then to go out and play on it, uh, it's a vastly different experience. So he felt like last year was a novelty, but this time we're on a mission. And you talked about Max Richardson uh, in this ball game and, and some of these other guys, Mason McDonald, Ty Hutkins. You know, Richardson said, for us, it's just week 14. You know, since the beginning of the season, we've been planning on all 14 weeks. Unlike last year, we were just happy to be there this week, or excuse me, this year we're like, we're doing 14 weeks, we're ready to be here, and we're gonna treat it like it's just another game for us. Easier said than done, we hear that a lot of the times, but they have come out here, and again, after maybe a little initial feeling out, they have been able to do what has gotten them here all season long. I've played and coached in seven state championships. Some have went our way, some have not. Uh, it's always a different game, but being able to not be uh, in awe of the lights is a huge advantage and Forest Hill Central learned from their mistakes last year. You know, one interesting thing about Tim Rogers, he said, you know, what we didn't do is last year we stayed downtown, but we didn't want to do that this year. They wanted to stay away from the distractions and uh, they actually stayed out in Livonia and then came in this morning for the football game. So try to keep everybody, you know, away from all the action and just stay focused, as I would like to say, a business trip. You know, Mason McDonald said, every senior, we got just one guaranteed game left, so we're going to give it our all the best we can. We don't want this thing to end any sooner than it should. And now a minute and a half away. Well, successful programs are made up of habits, not just goals, but reaching this ultimate goal is such a relief for a coach, especially who's put so much time and effort in the kids and community. And it is just a really special moment for not only the kids and their families, but the staff. 
how much time they sat sure. Bryce away from their family. Uh, they're practicing on Thanksgiving. They've been gone, basically. We call them single mother, coach's wife, single mothers from, you know, July to uh, November right now. And the coach's wives and the coach's families, uh, hats off to them as well on both sides. Uh, these communities coming out, seeing how Mason represented Four Hills Central. Uh, just an amazing experience. Uh, it never gets old. Uh, playing in two state championships when we were at a dome. Uh, back in the day, but you, you get those butterflies in your stomach, and uh, you're very proud of both communities and how, how they represent themselves this year in 2023. Yeah, nothing better. Nothing better, but and well stated. Again, a lot of the behind-the-scenes people, you talk about the wives and the moms and, and all the boosters that make this possible, and we highlight the young men out there playing on the field today. Hey, you want to keep up with everything? MHSAA on social media. You can look it up on Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube for football finals updates, event announcements, video highlights, and high school athletics news from around the state. It's the very best way to connect with the MHSAA every day. Uh-oh, don't show them back on the screen. Those kids will lose it again. And McDonald keeps it on the ground. And no timeouts remaining on fourth and one. That is a first down, and now be able to go into the victory formation. But Tim Rogers and his entire staff. Heck of a performance here in the championship game. But a lot of these seniors be playing for the very final time in a football or on a football field. For some of them that are lucky enough to go to the next level, like Ty Hudkins, our player of the game. Said last year we almost felt like we have to win. It's the last game of our season. Today we want to go out and have fun. One last time playing with the boys and hopefully come out with the win. Well, those hopes have been answered. He had his fingerprints all over this game as Mason McDonald takes the knee. These young men will remember this experience for the rest of your life. It's not because uh, this will be the best thing that ever happens to them. It's because they'll always be able to reference the time that they put in this much work with their brothers how pure football is and it's an equation for success and they'll always reference it they'll always remember it and they'll be uh at, at you know alumni thanksgiving dinners 50 years from now remembering today congratulations forest hills central forest hills central champions of division three with a 13 and one mark tremendous performance here above previously unbeaten the Mason Bulldogs, it's a 27 to 10 final, and the Rangers back here at Fort Field for the second time in two years. This time, get it done, and they will hoist the hardware. Seven ten year final coming up next the division five state final featuring Grand Rapids Catholic Central and the Corona Cavaliers kickoff scheduled for right around 430 for Lexi Ayala Justin Sasantai and our entire Valley Sports Detroit crew. I'm Johnny Kane. We thank you for joining us for the second of four MHSAA finals on this Sunday. We'll see you back here at Ford Field again right around 430. My good friend Matt Shepard and Devin Gardner and Natalie Kerwin take over our coverage then. So long for now. Been down for far too long. Let me tell you, son. Paying the price for the seed you sown. For what you've done. Don't be ashamed of who you are.